Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. American Comics. Silver Super, picked up Gwen at the beginning. Chapter 46. Osborne Industrial Gate. The two of George withdrew from the alley, and after confirming that there was no danger around them, they immediately contacted reinforcements. Then the two immediately ran towards the gate of Osborne Industry. The security guard at the gate saw two people rushing towards them in the middle of the night, and they looked like nothing good. Immediately pick up the walkie-talkie and call in other security personnel. As soon as George arrived at the door, he immediately took out his ID, detective. Now an extremely dangerous person has come into your Osborne industry. We have to go in and catch him, otherwise you will all be in danger. After talking about his purpose of coming, George planned to go in directly. But the security guard immediately stood in front of him, excuse me, Mr. Detective. I can't let you in at this time without any warrant or order from my boss. Please go back. The two of George looked at each other. I know I can't get in. Because behind that security guard, more and more security guards gathered. In the beautiful country, if the two of George still want to break in under such circumstances. Even if this group of security personnel beat them to death, they have no place to reason. Head, what shall we do now? Call Norman Osborne, tell him what's going on, and ask him to let us in. Good. The police immediately called Norman Osborne. Unfortunately, no one answered the phone at all. George understood right away what was going on. He gave us a work number, not his personal number. A social figure of Norman's size would not easily give out a private number. Go back first, and wait until our people arrive. A group of security personnel watched George and the two leave, and returned to their posts one after another. But in order to prevent George from breaking in suddenly, there was only one person at the gate. Now it has increased to three people. All of a sudden, a confrontation was formed. After thinking about the situation in front of him, George wondered why the lizard Peter suddenly appeared in Osborne Industry. Let them bring Professor Connors here too. Good. In the gatekeeper's office, the person who confronted George just now was the security captain, looking at the two people who were still outside the door. After thinking about it, I decided to report it to my superiors. Otherwise, if something really happened, he is the one who can't eat and walks around. General manager, there are two detectives at the door. After briefly explaining what happened, the general manager's anxious voice rang out from the other end of the phone. They must not be allowed into Osborne Industries, I will come here now. The security captain also heard the dissatisfaction of a delicate woman. While hanging up the phone, there was a trace of jealousy in his eyes. Life of the rich, Lao Tzu is here to watch the night, you are happy. Jealousy is jealousy, and the tasks assigned by the superiors must be completed. Attention everyone, the patrol should be tighter. Prevent it, those two guys at the door sneaked in. Receive. Rich area of New York City. In an extremely luxurious manner, Norman was lying on a massage table enjoying the services of a beautiful masseur. Take the fatigue out of the day. The old housekeeper came over with the phone. Master, someone is calling. A work phone. Norman asked lazily. Yes. Never mind, put it back. Is Harry back? The old housekeeper said softly. I haven't come back yet. I said it's my classmate's birthday, and I'm celebrating my classmate's birthday with me. Hearing this, George couldn't help sneering. My own son. Nothing like him. It's okay, you go down. Just when Norman was about to continue doing something else, the old butler walked in again. Still holding a mobile phone in his hand. Didn't I tell you to leave the work phone alone? Master, it's your personal phone number. Calling from the general manager of Osborne Industries. Norman narrowed his eyes. He knew that if he would call at this time, something must have happened. You all go down. After all the servants left, the old housekeeper handed the mobile phone to Norman and left the room. Don't forget to close the door before leaving. Having watched Norman grow up, he is very aware of his master's temper. After everyone had left, Norman answered the phone. What's the matter? Boss, there are two detectives. After listening, Norman frowned. No matter what, we must stop them, and we must not let them enter the Osborne industry. You rush over now, and I will go over too. Remember, once the cooperation between the military and us is discovered, neither you nor I will end well. Have you heard clearly? 
After hanging up the phone, Norman had a rare look of anxiety on his face. Did the detective find something? Impossible, I have been doing it very covertly, and the military will help me. Norman is also a person who has experienced strong winds and waves, and he immediately adjusted his mentality. After putting on his clothes, he went downstairs and drove to Osborne Industry without saying a word. Osborne Industries third floor. Gwen landed in front of a heavy iron gate, which was a low temperature freezer for storing various experimental specimens and medicines. Under the cracking of the Red Queen, the door of the freezer opened immediately. A gust of cold air rushed out, and Gwen couldn't help shivering. Miss Gwen, Peter Parker is coming this way, you need to hurry up. Mr. George and the others have also discovered that Peter Parker has sneaked into Osborne Industry, and are calling for reinforcements to prepare to enter Osborne Industry. Good. Gwen entered the freezer, looking for the place where the Red Queen said. Soon she found a small incubator, looking through the glass of the box, there were two bottles of Green's reagent inside. Found it. Gwen picked up the incubator and ran outside. When he was almost at the door, the Red Queen's reminder sounded. Miss Gwen, Peter Parker is at the door. The next moment, a huge amount of figure blocked the door. Uh oh Spider-Man. Lizard Peter was also surprised when Spider-Man appeared here, and he immediately understood what was going on when he saw the incubator Gwen was holding. Spider-Man, do you want to influence the great evolution of all mankind? Give me the regenerative genetic reagent quickly, only I can lead all human beings to a brighter future. Hey! Definitely no problem. But I'm a little curious, what did you eat, and how did you grow up so big after you haven't seen him for a day? Without further ado, Lizard Peter grabbed Gwen with his sharp claws. Don't be so anxious, just give it to you. Watching the Lizard Peter's claw fall, Gwen couldn't use it in such a small space. Then he threw the incubator in his hand out. Seeing the incubator falling towards him, the Lizard Peter immediately withdrew his claws, and if he scratched it, it would be the end of the game. While Peter's claws were recovered, the attention was on the box. Gwen shot the cobweb stuck to the outer post, and the petite figure came out of the gap. After the lizard Peter got the incubator, the first thing he did was check the two tubes of regenerative gene reagents inside. When you see the only two tubes left, the smile couldn't be concealed on the face. Look, this is simply the most beautiful thing in the world. Spider-Man, you will be a great contributor to my future evolution world. The lizard Peter turned around, only to find that there was no Spider-Man behind him. Before he could wonder why Spider-Man had disappeared, that familiar voice came from above his head. Hey, big guy, here it is. The lizard Peter raised his head subconsciously when he heard the sound, and was greeted by a kick on the forehead. Gwen shoots the cobweb sticking to the thermostat with a pull. Thank you for warming me up for a while, this thing is ice. Oh, that's right. Lizards are also cold-blooded, so they don't get warm. You just freeze curry for a while. Gwen added another kick and kicked the lizard Peter into the freezer, and the Red Queen immediately closed the door of the freezer. Queen Red, where is the laboratory located? Exist. Before the Red Queen could say anything, Gwen's spider telepathy rang the alarm, and the freezer behind her made a loud bang. The lizard Peter actually broke through the wall and rushed out. He pretended to go straight to Gwen. Gwen took off with a backflip and perfectly dodged the lizard Peter's attack. But the power of the lizard Peter remained undiminished, and he directly hit the pillar in front of him. For a while, smoke and dust filled the air. If it hit me just now, it would definitely be uncomfortable. His head is too hard. Gwen completely forgot, who could kick such a hard head so dazed. But it also just proves that the lizard Peter's head is hard enough. If it were a common man, Gwen could be kicked to death if he didn't keep his foot straight. Spider-Man, give me something quickly. In the smoke and dust, the lizard Peter rushed out again and wrestled with Gwen. Gwen could clearly feel that the lizard Peter was much stronger than before in terms of strength and recovery ability. In addition, she still has to protect the genetic reagent in her hand. It became weak for a while. Hey! This stuff doesn't belong to you, I definitely can't give it to you. Even so, Gwen's verbal skills were still not affected in any way. No, that's mine. Professor Connors and I developed it together, and the hateful Osborne industry took away our research and development results. Forehead. 
Gwen was momentarily at a loss for words. He seemed to have a point. He does have a share in this stuff. Instead it's me. Then I'll go out and take it to Professor Connors. Your state is not suitable for keeping things. Obedient. While dodging, Gwen shot again where the cobweb restrained the lizard Peter's feet. Losing his center of gravity, the lizard Peter lost his footing and fell straight down. Big guy, I won't play with you anymore. Gwen saw the opportunity and ran towards the French windows. Lizard Peter grabs a stool next to him and smashes it straight. Downstairs of at the moment. A lot of police detectives have gathered behind George, blocking the entrance of Osborne Industry. With the above command, it is even more impossible for those security personnel to put George and the others in now, otherwise the consequences will be really serious. No, you can't go in without a search warrant or an order from above. No matter what, I won't let you in. Captain George, Peter really. Next to George was Connors who had come over from the police station just now. Yes, absolutely. But I don't understand why Peter came to Osborne Industries after he had already used regenerative genetic reagents. Connors also had a thoughtful look. For a while, he couldn't figure out why. Maybe I will see Peter again and ask him in person. Director George, I already know your identity clearly, but please understand us. It is absolutely impossible for us to let you in. The security captain led the security personnel to block the gate, and continued, in our Osborne industry, there is no dead end for surveillance. I also investigated what you just said, and no one sneaked into the Osborne industry. No, the security captain was short of saying that he would guarantee his life. George also has nothing to do, if he conflicts with the security personnel of Osborne industry. Whether he can catch the lizard Peter doesn't know. But tomorrow it will definitely hit the headlines, and the gates of the New York Police Department will be trampled by those reporters. What do you want? You are willing to let us in. Unless there is an explosion inside now. The voice just fell. There was a violent sound of glass breaking from the third floor, which was particularly ear-piercing and loud in the silent night. Everyone was startled. All the police officers pulled out their guns at the first time, and raised them in the direction of the sound. Everyone clearly saw that a chair fell from the sky. The security captain is stupid. Are you so smart at speaking? Although this thing is not an explosion, it just proves that there are people inside now. Let us go in, otherwise I don't know what that guy will do. George directly picked up the collar of the security captain, and the security captain panicked. Wait a minute, I'll call our boss now. Still calling. George was very angry, but fortunately the other security personnel were not paying attention to them now. They were all curious about what was going on upstairs. Under George's signal, a group of police officers rushed in. In the guard room, as soon as the security captain got on the phone, he saw the police rush in. Now he can't take care of both ends, and the general manager's voice came from the other end of the phone, how is it now? I'll be right there. General manager, there is really something in the company, the glass is blown. What did you say? It has to be said that being a captain is not easy. All of a sudden, he explained the whole matter evasively, with a touch of exaggeration. A group of people stay here. Another group of people came up with me to see. It's dangerous. Didn't your family teach you not to litter? Looking at the broken floor to ceiling windows, if he hadn't dodged quickly, he might have been smashed down together. Spider-Man, I'll say it one last time. Give me what's in your hand. Gwen jumped from the ceiling too, and she knew she wouldn't if she didn't deal with Peter first. It is impossible to safely take the regeneration gene reagent in his hand away from this place. If he kept blocking it, even if he got to the laboratory, it would be difficult for the Red Queen to carry out experiments. Okay, let's fight. Whoever wins is the kind. Lizard Peter's lizard face turned black. Although he has been talking harshly, it doesn't mean that he can really beat Spider-Man. Almost got beat up last night. Not to mention now. When the lizard Peter was thinking, the tongue slipped out of his mouth carelessly. A stern look flashed in his eyes. Spider-Man, you want to protect many people, right? Forehead. Why did you ask this suddenly? It feels like you have bad intentions. No, I just want to make a deal with you. Suddenly, the lizard Peter turned around and ran towards the French windows in another direction. And that direction corresponds to the gate of Osborne Industry. 
For a moment Gwen couldn't figure out what Peter the lizard was trying to do. Is he trying to escape? Not good, Miss Gwen. The Red Queen's voice came out immediately. Mr. George is walking in with a group of police officers. Gwen's expression changed instantly. She knew what was going on. Just now when the lizard Peter's tongue sticks out, it captures the pheromones of other people. That's why I asked that sentence. Stop Peter, you can't go any further wrong. I have a way to get you back to normal. The lizard Peter charged so fast that Gwen had a hard time catching up. Soon the lizard Peter came to the floor to ceiling window and slammed his head on it, smashing the glass directly. Below, a few people who had just approached the Osborne Industrial Building were taken aback by this sudden change. Looking up, nothing but glass shards floating down from the sky. At the same time, there was also a monster with huge amounts falling from the sky, and because it was too dark, no one could see what it was. George's reaction was the fastest, get out of the way. His roar immediately caused everyone to disperse like a conditioned reflex. After the lizard Peter fell, his huge body cracked the floor. What kind of monster is this? What? Mutant? Dot dot dot. The dispersed police officers all looked warily at the cloud of smoke and dust in the center. A group of police officers at the gate immediately ran over with their guns raised, and a group of security personnel also followed under the command of the captain. Soon the figure of the lizard Peter came out of it. Satisfied looking at these people around. Peter. Is your Peter. How are you? Among the people who came up was Professor Connors. When he saw Peter the lizard, his voice trembled a little. Professor Connors, I feel very good now, never before. You see, our experiment was successful. Professor Connors, believe me, as long as I inject the regenerative gene reagent, your lost arm will grow back immediately. Lizard Peter was almost speaking seductively. Connors used to be a frontline military doctor who was fighting on the front line, but retired from the front line after losing his arm in a battle. It was also because of this broken arm that he lost too much before he started to devote himself to biological science. Experiments on the regeneration of severed limbs were studied. Having been with Peter for so many years, Connors fully understood the tone of Peter at the moment. Peter has been completely influenced by lizard genes. Peter, tell me, what did you come to Osborne Industries for? Lizard Peter smiled coldly. I believe you will understand me, Professor Connors. When George was about to persuade, Gwen, who fell from the sky, shouted, Get out of the way. He will hurt you. There are people. George looked up. Spider-Man. Why are you here? At the moment when everyone was attracted by Gwen, the lizard Peter made a move. After Gwen lightly landed on the ground, he questioned the lizard Peter angrily. Peter. He is Professor Connors, what are you going to do? At this time, Peter had already grabbed Professor Connors, and his sharp claws directly pierced the skin on his neck. Blood began to ooze out little by little. Looking at the blood, the lizard Peter couldn't help licking it. George and others immediately raised their pistols and aimed at the lizard Peter, put Professor Connors down, Peter Parker. George uncle, remember to say hello to Gwen, I'll go find her when I'm done with this. George's face turned cold, I don't understand what Peter means. But one thing is for sure, absolutely nothing good. As the person involved, Gwen's face also changed, but he was not stupid enough to admit his identity to the lizard Peter. Spider-Man, you are a smart woman. I think you should know why I held Professor Connors hostage. Gwen squeezed the handle of the incubator in his hand. Let Professor Connors go, I'll give you this right away. Oh, it's okay. Wait, if you don't give it to me, it's a clever trick. How many people here can you save? As soon as these words came out, the expressions of all the people present changed. Don't worry, I will do what I say. Good. The lizard Peter threw Connors straight away, and Gwen immediately got up and jumped to catch Connors. No, Spider-Man, you can't give him what you have, I know what he is going to do. I know that too, Professor Connors. But there is no way now, he has lost his humanity now. If he didn't hand over the things, Peter the lizard would really kill him. Spider-Man, it's time for you to fulfill your promise. Go as soon as you get the things, or I will kill you. Threatened people. So will Gwen. Lizard Peter also really felt Spider-Man's killing intent. After speaking, Gwen threw out the incubator in his hand, and the lizard Peter immediately picked it up and hugged it. 
He quickly ran in the direction he came from. George looked at the direction he was away from, knowing that if he didn't do it now, he had no chance. Go grab. The sound of gunshots resounded through the night sky instantly. Bullets were pouring into Peter the lizard's back, but the attack did nothing at all. How can it be? It's useless, he has super resilience, and he can recover immediately from the bullet damage. Connors explained. Suddenly George was taken aback. Where is Spider-Man? Sewer. On a platform, the escaped lizard Peter looked at the incubator in front of him with satisfaction. As long as I have this, I can complete the evolution of all human beings. When he turned the incubator to check the regenerative genetic reagent inside, the lizard Peter's face changed suddenly. Spider-Man. You fool me. In the incubator, there was only one tube of regenerative gene reagent left, and the other tube was missing. Needless to say, Spider-Man must have taken it. In order to confirm the authenticity of the other tube of genetic reagents, the lizard Peter immediately opened the incubator. After confirming that there was no problem, he breathed a sigh of relief. Spider-Man, even with only one tube, I can accomplish great human evolution. It won't take long, I will become the god of this world. By the time, there was a strange laughter resounding in the sewer. On the exterior wall of a building in New York City, Gwen looked at the other tube of regenerative gene reagent in his hand, and smiled slightly at the corner of his mouth, this time it's a tie. It turned out that after the lizard Peter landed just now, Gwen didn't follow up so quickly. It was because she guessed the lizard Peter's plan that she opened the incubator ahead of time and took out a tube of regeneration gene reagent. The reason why I left the tube was because I was afraid that the lizard Peter would ignore his threat and check the incubator. There is a tube inside, even if the lizard Peter finds out, he will not continue to pester him. After all, to Peter the lizard, two tubes are as useful as one. Queen Red, give me the location of the laboratory. Yes, Miss Gwen. In Lin Manor, the Red Queen reported on the situation tonight. Lin nodded in satisfaction after listening, it seems that Gwen's fighting awareness is getting higher and higher. Queen Red, have you collected all the battle data for tonight? Yes master. A database has been established for the new spider battlesuit. Tonight's battle data will be entered into the database and become the research direction for the development of the new battlesuit. Is the master naming the new battlesuit? Naming. Lin stroked her chin amusedly. Iron Man's battle armor is called Mark, and the number of generations is called Number. And Lin knows that in the future, Iron Man's armor will develop different emphases according to various situations. There are also various anti-war armors aimed at a certain person. In that case, let's call it a ghost battle suit. Gwen's hero name is Ghost Spider-Man, and the battle suit is called Ghost Spider Battle Suit, which is not too appropriate. New document. Ghost Spider Battle Suit established. 3D modeling in progress. A projection of the new battle suit appeared in front of Lin, and various data integrations appeared on it. When the 3D printing cabin arrives, these data models can be used to make new battle suits. The Red Queen said so. This is the reason why I asked JARVIS for a 3D printing cabin. The Dutch Brothers Spider Battle Suit was made with a 3D printing cabin. As long as the corresponding function adjustments are made, different battle suits can be made. I have to say that Tony's brain hole is really big. Even this kind of stuff can be sorted out. Has Gwen been to Stark Industries lab now? On the way, Norman Osborne and others from Osborne Industry have already arrived at the scene. We are discussing with the police station. Norman Osborne. The name, Lynn is also clear. But what is clear is not his identity as the founder of Osborne Industries, but another identity. One of Spider-Man's old enemies, the Green Goblin. Don't bother with the Osborne industry, and help Gwen develop anti-gene drugs first. Good. On the other side, Gwen had already changed back into her clothes and walked into a laboratory. As soon as he entered the door, he was stunned by the sight in front of him. Cool. Gwen himself also knows how to do research, otherwise how could he develop such a resilient cobweb for combat? So she could see at a glance that all the things in the laboratory in front of her were top-notch equipment. In contrast, the laboratory equipment at Empire State University is not an exaggeration to say that it is rubbish. Sure enough, it was worth throwing away. Did Tony Stark really lend us this lab? Gwen couldn't believe it. Yes, Miss Gwen, 
Please put the genetic reagent on the platform over there. I'll start researching right away. Since there is no projection equipment here, the Red Queen can only continue talking to Gwen in the headset. However, for the convenience and accuracy of the experiment, all laboratories have JARVIS interfaces. So the Red Queen took over all the operations here directly. A platform also slowly moved over, and Gwen immediately put the reagents on the test tube rack. Queen Red, how long will it take to develop an anti-gene reagent? Now that the regenerative gene reagent had been taken by the lizard Peter, Gwen knew he didn't have much time left. If Peter the lizard spreads the spores first, that would be really troublesome. Miss Gwen, please don't worry, Peter Parker only has a tube of regenerative gene reagent in his hand. Even if he wants to infect all humans, he must first cultivate a sufficient number in the spore environment. And the fastest way to disperse the spores is to disperse the spores first into the clouds, and then fall in the form of rainfall. You mean, Peter needs time? Yes, Miss Gwen. Not only does it take time, it also needs the cooperation of the weather. According to my calculations, there will be a torrential rain that will sweep across New York in three days, and the number of cultivations at that time will be just enough. Then three days later, two days. Before Gwen could say anything, the Red Queen gave her own answer. It only takes two days to create an anti-gene reagent. Good. Outside Osborne Industries, George led a group of police officers to evacuate, and Norman stood at the door with a stern expression and watched them leave. After everyone left, the general manager beside him said, Boss, just let them go. Will it be too cheap for them? Snapped. Norman slapped him directly, otherwise, what do you want? let them come in for investigation. Now there is a monster in the Osborne industry. He only needs to apply a little bit to come in and check. The general manager is very clear. Once those are found out, the whole company will die. No wonder Norman has such an atmosphere. Unexpectedly, the regeneration gene reagent was not lent to them, but was taken away by that monster. Did he take that thing because he wanted to create a partner for himself? As a biologist, Norman's first starting point was the biological instinct. If he had known earlier, it would have caused such consequences. Let George take away those two tubes of genetic reagents today. Go back and see if anything was found. Yes. Night. Inside shield. After a busy day at work, Nick Fury is getting ready for a good night's sleep. As the director of shield, his dormitory is in his office, and he only needs a little manipulation. One wall of the office will be opened, and behind the wall is a small private room. This room is also Nick Fury's secret. Because there are a wall full of cat photos in the room, most of which are big oranges. If other people knew that the Majestic Shield director, the murderous, sinister Mare Foxia was secretly a cat slave. What a wonderful thing that would be. Looking at the cat photos on the wall, Nick Fury felt something melt inside him. Oh, goo goo. In the corner of one of the photos, the name of the orange cat was written. But unfortunately, it is not always an orange cat in the traditional sense. This has something to do with a legendary experience when Nick Fury was young, and his glasses were also injured at that time. Nick Fury sometimes jokes about being hurt by aliens. Although it is not very different from the facts. Just when he was engrossed, the door of the office was pushed open. Director, there is something important. Oh, oh, the air seemed to freeze for a moment. Hill was stunned by the scene in front of him and Nick Fury's idiot-like expression. The agent's intuition told her. Go, you must leave here immediately. Otherwise, they will be murdered. Clean up first, I'll come in after knocking on the door. Close the door when you speak, and complete a whole set of actions in one go. Nick Fury was in a daze. But he quickly adjusted his mentality closed the wall again, and sat back in his seat with a serious face. Without Hill knocking on the door, Nick Fury said, come in. Hill slammed the door open, director, something big has happened. She tried her best to keep her movements, expressions, demeanor, and tone exactly the same as before, so as to confuse Nick Fury just had a dream. But when she saw Nick Fury's charcoal black face, well, it seemed like his face was just that dark. What's the big deal, hurry up. Nick Fury didn't want to expose this matter, so he also wanted to cooperate. But the sinister expression on his face was still the killing intent in his eyes. 
It has revealed his true thoughts. If what Hill said wasn't big enough, he he. Then let her understand the cruelty of the Agent King. Not long ago, the leader of the Mutant Brotherhood, Magneto Eric Lencher, entered New York. Hearing the report, Nick Fury immediately stood up on the stool. Hill was taken aback. Don't want to kill people now. But this time Hill misunderstood what Nick Fury meant, because this matter is really big. Every time Magneto enters New York, he will make all kinds of earth-shattering events. Where is he now? He has only Mystique Raven Darkhome with him. Judging from the route, it should be heading to the Xavier Academy for Young Talents. Go to Xavier's school. Nick Fury froze for a moment. Magneto came to New York, and he understood where he went. He really couldn't understand going to this place. Hadn't he and the X-Men been rivals all along? Why did you come to New York today to drop by? Has there been any big moves on the Mutant Brotherhood side recently? Hill shook his head, since the last operation failed, the current Mutant Brotherhood is extremely well behaved. Quietly, not daring to cause trouble. Nick Fury pondered for a while. Hill, get ready. We're also going to the Xavier School for Young Gifted Boys. Magneto descends on New York suddenly, without warning. What is the real purpose of the other party? It seems that he will have to meet for a while before he can understand. Okay, I'll get ready right away. Hill immediately turned and walked out of Nick Fury's office, closing the office door for a split second. Hill patted his chest and let out a long breath. Life. It can be regarded as saved. The entrance of Xavier's school. Where Magneto stood, looking at the school. Smiling, he said to a charming woman next to him, after all these years, this place is still like this. This woman is naturally mystique, and her mutant ability can change all of her physical characteristics into someone she has seen. The woman she has become now is a well-known actress from the beautiful country. Logan noticed Magneto's arrival immediately. He couldn't forget that nasty smell. Almost at the same time Magneto arrived, he stepped out with his adamantium claws out. Eric, what are you doing here? Logan, how can we say that we are also old friends, does it hurt my heart to be like this as soon as we meet? Logan didn't bother to talk nonsense with Magneto, so he raised his wolf claws and killed him. Magneto just raised his hand slightly, and pushed Logan away, sticking directly to the iron pole of the school gate. If you don't have adamantium, maybe you can meet me. This is the result again. Logan is tired. At the moment, the other X-Men also rushed out. Seeing everyone in Magneto looking murderous, Chin walked out. Eric, this is not where you should come. Leave now. Is this how you X-Men treat guests? Did Charles ask me to come here because he wanted you to kill me? The professor asked you to come here. Little rascal was a little unbelievable. Aren't you two rivals? This is Professor X coming from behind pushing a wheelchair. Stop it all, I invited Eric to come here. Chin at the front immediately understood the reason. There was a hint of excitement in his eyes. It seems that Professor X is planning to go to Lin's set of ideas. Under Professor X's signal, although Magneto walked into the Mutant Academy swaggeringly, it didn't mean that the X-Men were slacking off on him. When Magneto walked up to Wolverine, he couldn't help complaining, aren't you going to grow old? Mystique glanced at Logan too. It seemed to say something comforting, but it didn't comfort me. We are almost the same. Logan looked away, indicating that he didn't want to talk to either of them. Magneto raised his hand slightly and put Logan down. Only when facing Magneto, Logan will hate himself as adamantium. Inside Xavier's school, Professor X has prepared a game of chess and beckons Magneto to sit down. But now Magneto doesn't have the leisure time to play chess with him. He came here because his friend who has been with him for many years is willing to support him. Magneto couldn't help smiling. Charles, have you finally found out that your benevolent ways are useless? It seems that you, a stubborn old man, are also enlightened. The X-Men behind Professor X also frowned, although they didn't know what Professor X called Magneto for. But after hearing what Magneto said, I probably guessed something. Professor X said unhurriedly, Eric, how many years haven't the two of us sat together to play chess like this? It's been many years, only since we separated because of differences in ideas. When they were young, the two were best friends. Later, due to various changes, Magneto was completely blackened, 
disappointed with human beings and vowed to destroy human beings and establish an earth with only mutants. Many years. Magneto also had a hint of reminiscence in his eyes, and then he began to manipulate the pieces on the chessboard and started to play chess. Both of them used their own super abilities. Charles, I'm really glad that you agree with my approach now. I believe that as long as the two of us work together, we will be able to build our own mutant empire. Inferior races like humans no longer need to survive in this world. Magneto is incredibly confident. In his opinion, if Professor X hadn't led the X-Men to stop him the previous few times, his plan would have succeeded. Now Mutant is the master of the Earth, so there is no need to hide all the time. Not bad, Eric. My set is completely outdated and can't be used anymore. Professor X said, being kind to the high level of the beautiful country is cruel to ourselves. Magneto smiled, he hadn't smiled so contentedly in years. But immediately he stopped laughing, because Professor X added, you can't do that either. The actions of the two of us will eventually lead to the demise of all mutants. What did you say? Magneto's face changed suddenly, and the super ability in his hand uncontrollably squeezed and burst upon. Charles, would you like to hear what you're saying? Will I cause the demise of mutant? Magneto sneered, and continued, the previous few times, if you hadn't been against our mutant brotherhood, I would have ruled the world long ago. That group of humans have long surrendered to mutants' feet. Boom. The more excited Wang Yu said, he overturned the chessboard and stared at Professor X angrily. It's like asking Professor X to give him an explanation. Seeing that Magneto lost control of his emotions, the X-Men turned on their super abilities one after another as if they were ready to fight. Mystique also immediately switched to a bruiser. Professor X calmed down and continued, Eric, do you think you are strong? Do you think you alone are strong enough to subvert the regime of the whole world? Definitely. Magneto replied directly, Mutant is the most powerful existence in this world. What are those weak humans, look? Magneto pointed to the steel jungle New York City not far away, and said with a hint of excitement, as long as I use my ability, the whole New York City will fall. Professor X does not doubt this, because there are steel structures in urban buildings now. Magneto's ability is almost devastating in the city. Whoa, whoa, what did I hear? Someone wants to destroy New York City. I suggest you say it again. The sudden intrusion of voices immediately aroused everyone's vigilance. Everyone here is a Superman class, how could someone show up and no one would notice? All eyes turned away. The people who come here are known to everyone. Nick Fury. Professor X is a little puzzled, why S.H.I.E.L.D. director will appear here. Originally, Magneto thought that Professor X had found him, but now it seems that the other party should have come uninvited. He also immediately thought of the reason, it seems that I was targeted by you as soon as I entered New York City. Nick Fury ignored Magneto, but raised his finger and pointed to his wrist, where there was a small light emitting device on it. A small gadget can make us invisible in front of Mutant. Definitely, this kind of invisibility means that Mutant has no way to detect the two of them, not the true sense of invisibility. Charles, I don't mind if you see old friends, but please let me know next time. After all, your friend is on the blacklist of the state council. Nick Fury squinted at Magneto amusedly. If Nick Fury's attitude towards Professor X at the moment seemed like a discussion, it was contempt for Magneto. From the moment he came in, even if Magneto said he could destroy New York City, Nick Fury's attitude towards Magneto has not changed. Contempt. Silence is the greatest contempt. Magneto immediately became popular, and Professor X did this because the two were both mutants and old friends at the same time. Why are you Nick Fury? A lowly human being, even a high-ranking man in a beautiful country, is a black man. The buff is full. Magneto Wang Yu became more and more angry, and immediately used his own ability. The chess pieces on the table were instantly pinched into conical nails, exuding a cold glow. If it is pierced by these things, it will be destroyed even if it is not dead. Eric, stop. Professor X is extremely clear about what the consequences would be if he killed S.H.I.E.L.D. director here. But Magneto doesn't think about it that much. Even now, Nick Fury still looked at Magneto with a look of disdain, and snapped his fingers at Hill beside him. Hill. Hill also manipulated the tablet in his hand calmly, and then raised the tablet screen in his hand. Right now, 
all the missiles on the shield carrier are pointing in one direction, Nick Fury explained. As long as there is a slight fluctuation in my vital signs, these missiles will go. Boom. Nick Fury even made moves with his hands. Although the action is funny, the deterrent effect is self-evident. Eric, do you want to try the whole mutant academy to be buried with me? The faces of all the people present became extremely ugly. Nick Fury is threatening Magneto with the lives of all the mutants at Xavier's school if he gets hurt. No one here can run. Magneto can do nothing but breathe fire from his eyes. If Professor X before that was lucky about mutant strength, Nick Fury's approach at this moment made him completely desperate. He finally understood the meaning of Jean's words. Mutant's overall strength is weak. Too weak. The strength of a single mutant cannot change the fate of the entire mutant group at all. Even taking a step back, Magneto successfully overthrew the regime of the beautiful country and ruled the beautiful country. But there is more than one beautiful country in this world. The mysterious Eastern Kingdom, the Maoshang Kingdom famous for its wars. Will they let a usurping mutant grow bigger and stronger? Now, don't point those things at me. Nick Fury looked at Magneto, no matter how unwilling Magneto was, he was firmly grasping him now. We all die together Magneto is not afraid. But if he really did this, mutant would really disappear completely from this world. At the moment Magneto had to re-examine what Professor X said just now. With a flick of the finger, all the tapered nails fell to the ground. Good. The praise of Nick Fury at the moment is particularly harsh here on Magneto, but there is nothing to do about it. The others could only stare blankly. Professor X said, Mr. Nick Fury, Eric just came to meet my old friend. We just had some quarrels just now, and I can assure you that he won't cause anything. Even the future. Nick Fury glanced at the two of them. Finally, he set his sights on Professor X. Charles, I hope you don't waste all your hard work over the years. The people above just had a better impression of your Xavier's school. This sentence is both a warning and a threat. Professor X was deeply scheming, so he naturally didn't let his dissatisfaction surface, and could only nod his head gently. The other X-Men heard it too and wanted to explode. But both were stopped by Logan and Jean. Nick Fury was gratified to see Magneto, the X-Men and Mutant Brotherhood, all by himself. But he also knows that he will accept it when he sees it. If the extremist Magneto is really in a hurry, Baobukchi will really die together. What you say is what you say, what you do is what you do. If Nick Fury were to trade himself, he would still think more about it. Threats are one thing, whether or not it is actually done is another matter. Knock in place, menace in place. What he should do as a shield director is almost the same. Hill, let's go. While walking, he did not forget to say, I will keep an eye on you. The figure of Nick Fury disappeared into the night, but Professor X suddenly smiled and looked at Magneto. Originally, he thought tonight that he wanted to show his affection to Magneto, and talked about it in a reasonable way. The appearance of Nick Fury is simply a stroke of genius, fueling the flames. Eric, do you agree with what I said now? Magneto looked at Professor X angrily, did you find Nick Fury? Definitely not, you should trust me. At the moment, Magneto has countless dirty words to blurt out. I believe you. I believe you shit, you dirty old man. The older the more annoying. Professor X looked innocent, because the appearance of Nick Fury was indeed beyond his expectation. But he also won't explain too much on the matter. After calming down, Magneto sat down again and glanced at the chess piece on the ground that he crushed. After a long time, Magneto finally sighed. Charles, if what you say next doesn't satisfy me, I'll kill you first. Since we met now, you have said this sentence many times, and I live well every time. You, Magneto was momentarily at a loss for words. During this period of time, I figured out that the path the two of us are taking will not work, and it will only lead mutant to the path of extinction in the end. So, we need to go down a whole new path. A path where you and I will work together to carve out a new future for mutant. What happened that night deeply affected the future of the Marvel Universe? And is the initiator of all this, Lin. Taking out a fairy bean from the system space. Gwen said weakly, I can't do it, Lin. Try this, Gwen. Early the next morning, Lin woke up from the bed, and Gwen was no longer there. Only a small note was left. Lin, 
It's early for class today, I'll go to school first. Looking at the content on the note, Lin smiled lightly and got up to wash and start a new day of life. At the same time, Tony woke up from his bed too. The exhaustion of studying new elements was swept away, and he rushed to the basement as soon as he woke up. J-A-R-V-I-S, get ready. Sir, it seems that there is no way to create this new substance with the current level of technology. Tony is definitely dismissive of J-A-R-V-I-S, reminders. The things I have built over the years can be replicated by the current level of technology. The purpose of retreating for a day and a night is to get this thing out. Stop talking nonsense J-A-R-V-I-S, just follow my instructions. In the utility room, Tony found a sledgehammer and put on a hard hat. The next step is the major engineering transformation. Tony, who was in the measurement laboratory, suddenly turned weird, and glanced at the Mark Armor cabin beside him. J-A-R-V-I-S, am I dazzled? Where's my Mark II? Sir, you are not dazzled, Mark II is indeed not there. What? Tony couldn't believe how his Mark II had disappeared. Could it be that J-A-R-V-I-S has betrayed? At this moment, Tony couldn't help but think of the plot in the Terminator. The artificial AI betrayed and destroyed the world, but the answer from J-A-R-V-I-S made Tony dispel this absurd idea. It was Colonel Rhodes who drove away. Next, J-A-R-V-I-S reviewed what happened to Tony during his retreat. Tony sighed helplessly. I was so excited that I forgot to withdraw that order. So what's going on with the Mark II now? People from the military asked Colonel Rhodes to keep the Mark II as a new weapon for research. As expected, Tony was too lazy to bother, there were more important things to do right now, let's get started, J-A-R-V-I-S. NYPD Conference Room. At the moment's meeting room, the atmosphere was heavy with Gwen. It was not George who spoke at the front, but Connors. George sat on the side, and after Connors finished talking about the purpose of the lizard Peter, his face was gloomy and terrifying. Professor Connors, are you sure Peter's purpose is to mutate all humans into lizard men? Connors nodded with certainty. Judging from his realization last night, he no longer thinks that his condition is a mutation, but a higher degree of evolution. He took away the regenerative genetic medicine, just to infect all mankind through spore technology. Evolve all human beings in his direction. Connors guessed his purpose from the words of Peter the Lizard last night, and spent another night speculating on Peter the Lizard's implementation plan. I found George for a meeting early this morning. The people present all seemed a little unbelievable after hearing the plan. But I have to believe it. After all, as a police officer in New York City, I have never experienced anything. Now it's just an alien invasion. After thinking for a while, George said, Professor Connors, where is this spore technology? Everywhere. This technology was developed by Osborne Industries, and hospitals under its enterprises, including cooperative enterprises, have spore nebulizers. So you know what I mean, Commissioner George. George is numb. Hospitals under the name of Osborne Industries spread all over the United States. More than 60% of the hospitals in New York City alone are owned by their companies, and this does not include their cooperative companies. So it is not an exaggeration for Connors to say that there are everywhere. In other words, Peter the Lizard could just sneak into any hospital and grab this thing. In fact, the spore atomizer has been snatched by the lizard men. What did you say? George looked at the police officer in disbelief, and the police officer walked out of the meeting room and brought in a receipt for filing the case. Just yesterday afternoon, one was robbed from a small hospital. The case was filed last night, and I just sent the police to investigate it today. Now it seems that the lizard man must have robbed it. Looking at the documents in his hand, George hammered the table weakly. Professor Connors, if you want to stop Peter, what can you do? Professor Connors thought for a while, then shook his head helplessly, if the regenerative gene reagent is still there, I can use the sample to conduct reverse research to make an anti-gene reagent. But now, but Professor Connors, didn't you research this thing? Then you just need to make another bottle, and our police station will help you with the laboratory. A police officer said so. For this kind of layman, Professor Connors could only patiently explain, it can't be done. Even with the support of the original experimental data, it is basically impossible to make an identical genetic reagent. 
Steve Rogers, Captain America, everyone sitting here should know that, right? Captain America, is a beautiful Chinese people know. The hero of World War II, the spiritual pillar in the hearts of every beautiful Chinese. Almost grew up listening to his heroic stories. Steve Rogers' genetic strengthening potion was destroyed by the Hydra agent. Even with the experimental data to support it, there is still no way to reproduce it. That's why. There are many reasons involved in this, so Connors can only give this example. With vivid examples, everyone will understand at once. So all we can do now is stop Peter with all our strength. George glanced at everyone present, and made up his mind, set up a special operations team, report to the higher authorities, and borrow stronger weapons. We must stop Peter the lizard. Go to the company that maintains the sewers. Let's first determine where the lizard Peter is hiding. If we can get rid of the lizard Peter in the sewers, that would be the best result. Captain George, hearing the word, saw, Connor's heart tightened, but he also understood that there was no other way now. In the end, he could only speak. Use fire, Director George. Fire. Connors nodded. Yes, no matter how fast his recovery speed is, the continuous burning at high temperature can cause huge amounts of damage. Flame is almost the biggest weakness of all carbon-based creatures. Once you know your weaknesses, you will naturally have to figure out how to deal with them. Prepare Molotov cocktails and muskets of the latest model. George immediately worked out a weapon plan. Yes. Soon, everyone in the special team started to act. Connors definitely wanted to do something. Director George, if possible, please take me with you when the time comes. I want to see if I can persuade Peter again. You should know, he's really a good boy. George nodded. Okay, but until we subdue Peter, you have to hide behind and not show up. Once you become a hostage again, it will be troublesome. Don't worry, what happened last night will never happen again. George patted Connors on the shoulder. Anyone could become his hostage last night, and you are not to blame for this. But, how do I feel that Spider-Man knows you? When George said this, Connors also felt the same way. But now is not the time to dwell on those things. Wouldn't it be much easier if we could get the help of Spider-Man at that time? No, we can solve this kind of thing with the police. Professor Connors, go down and rest first. You didn't sleep well last night. After getting along during this period of time, Connors also knew George's character, so he didn't persuade him anymore. After all, Spider-Man also said last night that he knew Peter the Lizard's plan. That's when Peter the Lizard should stop. The entire New York Police Department quickly operated under George's order. New York Sewers. A table was built with various strange materials on a platform, and the Lizard Peter huge amounts of claws was carefully operating a precision instrument on it. After all the equipment was set up, the Lizard Peter took out the regeneration gene reagent from the incubator. After opening it, slowly went in. This instrument is the spore nebulizer that he snatched. Seeing that the machine has started to work, the lizard Peter's vertical pupils revealed a look of great satisfaction. Ha ha ha, soon I will become the god of all mankind, and no one can bully me anymore. Under the lizard Peter's feet, there were several leather jackets stained with blood. It can be seen that he had a full meal. Xavier's school. Early this morning, Chin had just finished her first class when Professor X called her to the principal's office. Professor, has Magneto returned? In the last discussion last night, only their two friends remained, so no one else knew what was discussed in detail later. Well, he has to go back and think about it first. Professor X smiled in satisfaction. Knowing what he knew about Magneto, that wasn't something he could do. Okay, Jane, there should be no problem with the mutant brotherhood. Starting today, I have also lifted the school's closure. If you have nothing to do, go out for a walk. Ah. Chin is a little suspicious of her own ears. On weekdays, in order to avoid unnecessary troubles, Professor X asks everyone in the academy not to go out as much as possible. Why do you let yourself go out more now? Professor X saw Chin's doubts, and explained directly, Chin, I know that this concept must have been taught to you. You don't want to say it, there must be your reasons. But whatever the outcome, that person did us a huge favor. Professor, I. Chin wanted to explain something, Professor X waved his hand, he is not only your friend, but also the friend of all mutants. Go, 
Thank him well. Professor, you won't send someone to follow me this time, will you? Professor X's face darkened immediately. The last time he asked Logan to follow you, he was afraid that you would be cheated and someone would take advantage of you. No, just go if you want. No one else can follow you except Logan, and Logan doesn't want to go anymore. Apparently, Professor X has approached Logan. But Logan is unwilling to accept this task anyway, the manor is his sad place. I don't want to go anywhere anymore. Thank you professor, then I'll go out first. Chin happily turned around and left the principal's office. Professor X lost all confidence in that appearance. Why does it seem, have a feeling of being arched cabbage? No, it must be an illusion. Professor X comforted himself in this way, and went back to his office to sit down, and then Mutant would embark on a new path. He is busy. After leaving the principal's office, Chin immediately returned to her dormitory and changed into a set of beautiful clothes. I don't know if Mr. Lin is at home now. Go and talk to him about the novel. Outside Lin Manor, a large truck stopped at the gate of the manor, where Lin stood to receive the goods. Hello, is this Mr. Lin? Yes, the courier from Stark Industries, please sign for it, it's a big guy. Do you need us to help you move in? After Lin signed her name, she said, I've prepared a room, come with me. After four or five workers put down a large box, they kindly helped Lin unpack the things. When they saw what was inside, although they were curious, they didn't ask much. After all, it was something sent by Stark Industries. What if it was something confidential and was silenced after knowing it? After the scene was packed, Lin thanked everyone. What was delivered was nothing but a 3D printing cabin. Queen Red, access the 3D printing cabin. Okay, master. The internal structure of the 3D printed cabin immediately lit up, and even the glass of the cabin door was electroplated. According to last night's battle data, build a new ghost battle suit for Gwen, named Ghost 2. Number 1 is naturally whichever one Gwen made himself. Whether the color scheme continues the original color scheme. Okay, but you need to add some new elements to it. After a little manipulation on the projected screen, Lin nodded in satisfaction, just follow this. Print job started, estimated completion time 3 and a half hours. So fast, a high-tech spider battlesuit can be completed in just over 3 hours, and Lin has to sigh that the ability is so easy to use. Other Spider-Man battlesuits are broken and have to be repaired by themselves. Gwen prints directly. Various functions can also be customized. If this is seen by Spider-Man from other universes, his envious eyes will probably turn sore. After closing the door, Lin walked out, just in time to see Gwen come back swinging the cobweb. A distressed look. What's wrong, Gwen? Lin, my dad told me to stay at home these two days and not to go out, for fear that I might be in danger. The reason is simple, Peter the Lizard mentioned Gwen last night. Lin smiled. It's normal, George uncle cares more about you. Peter said something like that last night, maybe he was afraid of what Peter would do to you. Gwen sat on the sofa and said with some melancholy, what if Peter's plan really comes true by then? You shouldn't have given him the regeneration gene reagent last night. What? Do you regret it? Lin sat next to Gwen. Gwen shook her head resolutely. No regrets, a person's life is also a life, and the life of an entire human being on earth is also a life. Under that condition, I have no choice but to save Professor Connors first. As for the future, I believe a solution can always be found. The trolley problem, the best answer. This is why Spider-Man is the most popular superhero. Because he has more humanity than other heroes, rather than all kinds of lofty forward-looking in divinity. Don't worry, I'm here. That's definitely not going to happen. Lin hugged Gwen. Queen Red, what is the New York Police Department doing now? Director George has already organized an action team and has also applied to his superiors for new weapons and equipment. It seems to be preparing to enter the sewers of New York City first. Gwen frowned, can they find Peter? Compared with Peter being found, Gwen is more worried about George's life safety, and she knows it well after fighting Peter the Lizard. There was no way the common weapon could have harmed him. The odds are slim, and New York City's underground sewers are complex. The Red Queen projected the underground waterways of New York City. The intricate and alternating pipes are more terrifying than a large maze. 
If there is a definite or approximate orientation, it can also be searched in an encircling manner. But it's almost impossible to explore underground waterways without knowing it. The Red Queen made the most rational analysis, however, in order to ensure the safety of Mr. George, I will always monitor the police channel. Make sure nothing goes wrong. So you can rest assured. Lin said with a smile. Gwen nodded vigorously, and at the same time raised her chin vigorously, thank you, Lin. Lin immediately began to think carefully. The Red Queen also lifted the projection very tactfully. Just when Lin was about to go down, there was a hearty battle at noon. The Red Queen's voice suddenly came out, Master, a guest has arrived. Gwen blushed instantly, and immediately sat back on the sofa, panting hard, trying to calm down her restless heart. Who? If you dare to disturb your own good deeds, you should beat him up first. Jean Grey. Chin. Lin and Gwen were taken aback at the same time, and then Gwen immediately stood up and rushed out, Sister Chin. Shield. Hill stood on the podium with Nick Fury. Magneto Eric has left New York with Mystique Raven, what they discussed with Professor X last night is unclear. Hill reports. Xavier's school is not like other places where you can arrange S.H.I.E.L.D. agents to sneak in. The first requirement to enter Xavier's school is mutant. Also go through the Professor X polygraph ceremony. His old man is the world's most sophisticated lie detector. This is also a necessary procedure to prevent others from sneaking in. Otherwise, Nick Fury didn't have to make a special trip to threaten Magneto last night. It's easy to put yourself in if you're not careful. Since Charles asked him to come, there shouldn't be any major problems. Do you trust Charles? Facing Hill's question, Nick Fury smiled noncommittally. Not only do I trust Charles, but everyone above trusts Charles. Otherwise, what Charles has done for so many years will be in vain. But I want to remind you that this kind of trust is completely different from the trust you understand. Know the same, Hill was even more confused. Although she is also an Apex agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., after all, she is still a little tender in the aspect of playing power. Nick Fury just smiled lightly without too much explanation. This kind of trust does not refer to between people. What's more, his Professor X is still a mutant. This kind of trust in Professor X is like the owner's trust that his dog will not bite him, which makes sense. But Nick Fury definitely won't go into detail. There are some things that are good to keep in your heart, but it is not good to say them out. Although it is a fact, some people just can't get used to the facts and want to daydream. However, to be on the safe side, pay more attention to the changes in Xavier's school during the operation of S.H.I.E.L.D. during this period. I always feel like something big is going to happen. But, Nick Fury didn't continue talking. This feeling can't be called good, but it can't be said to be bad either. But it is always right to pay more attention. Any new news from Natasha Romanoff? No. Has J.A.R.V.I.S. been hacked? Hill nodded. Tony has fixed all the bugs since you hacked once last time. The current J.A.R.V.I.S., with the ability of the S.H.I.E.L.D. Information Department, has no way to break through. Nick Fury nodded understandingly. After all, when J.A.R.V.I.S. was able to invade, it took a while to prepare for a loophole. Tell Natasha Romanoff to hurry up, or someone's going to mess with Tony. Who? Even if Hill is Nick Fury's assistant, it doesn't mean she has access to all the information of the God Arm Bureau. Some are still in the hands of Nick Fury. The grievances and grievances of the older generation, let Tony solve it by himself. Hill nodded half understanding, and did not continue to ask further questions. Looking at Nick Fury's aloof and arrogant face at the moment, if I hadn't seen that scene last night, I would have believed it. Hill, if there is nothing else to report. Let's go down first. Nick Fury looked at Hill with piercing eyes, and Hill was startled. Yes, director. Immediately, he left the podium without looking back, fearing that if he was one step too late, Nick Fury would lose his temper. Through the skylight of the S.H.I.E.L.D. mothership, Nick Fury looked solemnly at the sky, Card Ross. Inside the manor, Chin bowed deeply to Lin, and said gratefully, Mr. Lin, this time is really thanks to you. Our principal is ready for reform. Gwen, who was sitting next to Lin, looked puzzled. Where is this all? Lin nodded indifferently. It's okay, the most important thing is to help you, we are all friends now. Don't be so alien, you can talk to Gwen for a while. I'm going to get you something to eat. 
It's already noon now, I just wanted to eat but didn't get anything else, so now I can only eat first. After Lin left, Lu Wen looked at Ya curiously. Sister Chin, what kind of reform are you talking about? Chin took a deep breath, and didn't intend to continue to hide from Gwen, after all, she really regarded her as a friend. She wanted to see how Gwen would react if she told the truth. Gwen, I'm actually a mutant. Speaking, in order to convince Gwen, Jean also used her ability to lift the water forest on the table and fly it in front of her to catch it. Looking at Gwen who was a little stunned, Chin felt that she was still too direct. Gwen, I'm going to explain this to you. Unexpectedly, the next moment, Chin was stunned. Because Gwen raised his hand, the cobweb shot out from the wrist and stuck to the wall not far away. It's like saying that. Coincidentally, I am a mutant too. But Chin definitely doesn't know that this cobweb is a product of technology. But it doesn't prevent Chin's mouth from being as big as an O-shape, full of shock. At this time Lin poked her head out from the kitchen. Gwen, don't shoot cobweb indiscriminately at home, or you will be punished. TCH, you're not always shooting indiscriminately. Gwen, what did you say? Chin didn't hear clearly, Gwen immediately waved her hand, it's nothing. Immediately afterwards, Jean asked curiously, Gwen, are you Spider-Man? Um, how about it, isn't it amazing? Chin nodded, I didn't expect that you are also a mutant, if I knew it earlier, I wouldn't hide it from you. I'm not a mutant, not a mutant, Chin was stunned. In her opinion, only mutants have this kind of super ability. She also saw a lot of reports about Spider-Man in Xavier's school these two days. Strictly speaking, I should be regarded as a transformation talent. Gwen told Chin in detail how she obtained the spider ability. After listening to it, even Chin felt a little unbelievable. Gene mutations are even rarer than mutants. You must know that this kind of gene mutation will kill you if you are not careful, and most of the mutations are bad. And like Gwen, perfect mutations can't be said. Maybe the whole earth is just like this. In addition to being surprised, Chin is also a little happy, and she doesn't have to hide it from Gwen anymore. Come on Gwen, let's go swimming first. Good. Gwen also put down the snacks in her hand, and happily pulled Chin's hand. After a short period of heart-to-heart -heart talk just now, the relationship between the two women has improved a lot. Just when the two were about to go upstairs and change into their swimsuits, the projection of the Red Queen appeared in front of them. Chin, who had never seen the Red Queen before, was taken aback immediately. What shocked her even more was that her telepathy could not sense a child in front of her at all. Who are you? Chin immediately became alert, and subconsciously pushed Gwen behind her. Hi, Miss Jean Grey, I am the Red Queen, and Lin is my host. I am the master's artificial intelligence steward. The Red Queen. As a fan of Lin's book, Chin is no stranger to this name, the artificial intelligence Red Queen in Resident Evil. Yes. Here, Chin directly understands that it is the Resident Evil Red Queen created with the Red Queen in front of her as a template. How would she know that this Red Queen came from the world of Resident Evil? After introducing herself, Queen Hong continued, Miss Gwen, Miss Chin. The current temperature of the swimming pool is not suitable for swimming. Please wait for half an hour, you can also take a bath first, adjust your body temperature, so as to get a more perfect swimming experience. Thank you, Red Queen. Gwen said with a smile. You're welcome. After completing the prompt, the Red Queen disappeared in front of the two of them. Gwen introduced Chin again about the red rear projection. I see. The two met at Tony's dance that day, so it's not surprising that Lin and Tony are familiar with this piano. After going upstairs, the two each chose another swimsuit. Then Chin pulled Gwen into the bathroom together. Even if Gwen was a girl, it was the first time she took a bath with a girl. Immediately felt a little shy. Sister Chin, why don't I go in and wash after you finish washing? Chin Yi smiled. Let's go, it's fine. As the older sister, Chin pulled Gwen into the bathroom. Not long after, Gwen also let go completely, and the sound of two people talking happily came from the bathroom. Inside Tony's lab, several large holes had been dug into the wall, and various pipes had been laid to fill the entire laboratory. Tony was holding a spirit level and testing the level of the pipes. Here, we still need to put something on. Tony looked at the crooked spirit level, looked around and finally found a round shield on the ground not far away. 
These are all found in the old warehouse. He has forgotten what the specific function is, even if he knows that this thing can only be used as a mat now. Once the mat is on, the spirit level is perfectly level. Perfect, J-A-R-V-I-S ready for energy output. Sir, it's ready. New elements can be manufactured at any time. Okay, come on. Tony put his hands on the rotary gate, J-A-R-V-I-S, adjust the power a little bit according to the frequency of my rotation. Yes sir. In the pipe, a blue laser energy was released and hit the wall. In an instant, burnt marks were left on the wall. Tony started to spin the energy, and everything in its path was blown out. It quickly hit a triangular device, and the laser energy seemed to be absorbed after hitting the triangular device. Tony watched the scene with satisfaction. Then a dazzling blue light flooded the entire laboratory, and the triangular device also emitted the same blue light. But it should be softer and more stable. For Tony, this blue light is simply the light of rebirth. Dad, you are a genius. At this moment, Tony had to admit that Howard was far smarter than himself. Even after all these years, he is still educating himself. It was also because of Howard that he lived again. Definitely, from Tony's point of view, if Lynn hadn't reminded him, maybe he would never be able to discover the treasure left by Howard in his life. Sir, congratulations on your successful research of a new element. I will complete all adaptation experiments of new elements as soon as possible. I leave it to you, J-A-R-V-I-S. Tony was in a good mood, the big stone that weighed on his heart finally fell. Immediately he felt himself relaxed. Even if his laboratory is now a mess, it doesn't matter. What is more important than being alive? Taking off his goggles, Tony smiled. Compared with the first time I put on the Mark II and took off for the first time, I laughed more happily, and I laughed from the bottom of my heart. When I got back upstairs, I saw Happy walking in. Hi, Happy. Tony couldn't help walking over and gave Happy a big hug. Before that, he thought that he would be separated from these friends forever. Happy didn't know why Tony was so enthusiastic all of a sudden, and felt uncomfortable for a while. Um, Tony, I am male. I definitely know, Happy. Tony let go of Happy, went to the bar to get himself a glass of wine, and took a hard sip. No, it's not as good as milk tea, and I must go to Lynn's house to get some milk tea after a while. I even gave him a 3D printing cabin. Grab some more cups of milk tea. Not too much, right? Happy, you're not in the company at this time, what are you looking for me for? I'll send you something nice, there will be a car race in Morocco in a while. How are you interested? Happy took out an invitation letter from his pocket and put it in front of Tony. Tony opened it and said, definitely, we will go together when the time comes. Call Pepper. At this moment, Tony wants to go anywhere. Definitely, I'll talk to her. Well, can you call Natasha Romanoff when you're angry? Natasha Romanoff. Tony thought for a while, and then realized that it was Pepper's new assistant, and he saw the dirty thoughts in Happy's heart at a glance. No problem, she will take your car then. Thank you Tony, then I'll go back to the company first. Go. Halfway through, Happy turned around and said, By the way, Tony, your condition today. Very nice. Definitely, I do that every day. Tony took another sip of wine, went back to his room and lay down. He had never felt so relaxed at any moment. It's such a great feeling. Resurrected from the dead, survived the catastrophe. It's almost the same. Anyway, Tony is so relaxed now that he, who never takes a nap, falls asleep at this moment. J-A-R-V-I-S also found out that Tony was asleep, and said softly, Good afternoon, mister. Then start to turn off the lights in the whole house and turn on the white noise. Let Tony get better sleep. After Harpy returned to the company, he came directly to Pepper's office. Since Black Widow came here, he often ran to Pepper's side. Pepper, Tony said that you should go with me when the time comes. Okay, if I'm free then. Little Pepper is busy with Stark Industry now, so it can be said that one is the first and the other two are big. Tony has become a hands-off shopkeeper, leaving all the business to her. At this time, Black Widow came over with a bunch of documents, hi, happy. Oh hi, Natasha Romanoff, do you need help? Thank you. Black Widow looked at Happy with winking eyes, Happy felt his heart was about to melt. 
By the way, Happy, were you looking for Mr. Tony Stark just now? Yes, send him an invitation. Moroccan Road Racing, you can go with me when the time comes, Tony and I fought for it. How? Interested. Definitely, that's the kind of thrill I love the most. Hearing that Black Widow agreed, Happy felt even happier. By the way, Happy, how is Tony doing now, I mean is he sick because he hasn't come to work for so long? No, it's his habit. Happy recalled Tony's appearance just now, and continued, he is not good enough, he has never been better. Excellent. Black Widow was dumbfounded. Isn't it right? Is it a flashback? Happy time always flies by. T.T. Chin, wearing a pink bikini, came up from the swimming pool and came to Lin's side. Mr. Lin, you seem to like basking in the sun. I really envy your constitution that doesn't tan. Chin found that every time Lin was free, she would bask in the sun on the deck chair. That kind of leisurely look is really enviable. Especially Chin, I am very envious. In her career, it seems that being able to bask in the sun with such peace of mind is a luxury. She also gradually fell in love with the atmosphere here at Lin. Relaxed and cozy. No flight, no fight. Next time you can put on sunscreen and come over to sunbath with me, it's very comfortable. The sun at this point in time is the most comfortable. Chin also lay down, her hot body still dripping with water, revealing a wordless allure. In the pool, there's Gwen. The swimsuit she chose this time was relatively conservative, but it still couldn't hide her proud figure. Especially recently, with Lin's moisture. It adds a special kind of beauty. This is also a beautiful view that can only be enjoyed by Lin. If these two beauties go to the public swimming pool or the beach to swim, they will definitely gather a group of people to strike up a conversation. Chin took a sip of milk tea and became more relaxed. Mr. Lin, you are really amazing. Originally, Jean just wanted to praise Lin for being able to cook, make desserts and write novels. But in this kind of environment, saying such words will inevitably make people daydream. Even Chin who said this sentence turned slightly red all of a sudden. What did I just say? Lin looked at Chin deliberately, he definitely knew what Chin wanted to express. 843 does not prevent him from misinterpreting Chin's meaning from his eyes. Chin immediately explained, No no, Mr. Lin, you misunderstood, I mean Mr. Lin, you are very powerful. Um, Chin blushed all of a sudden, I mean there are very few people like Mr. Lin in this world. Oops, only then did Chin realize that she was being bullied by Lin. After glancing at Lin resentfully, he got up again and jumped into the swimming pool to fight with Gwen. The projection of the Red Queen also appeared at this time. Miss Gwen, Mr. George sent you a message, and he is going to pick you up at school now. Gwen, in the pool, was taken aback immediately. If George finds out that he is not in school now, Bao Bukchi will ask again. Lin, I have to go back to school first. Okay, you go and change first, I'll wait for you in the car. Sister Chin, I'll go now. Chin nodded. Okay. Chin also knew what happened recently during the conversation with Gwen just now, and comforted Gwen. And tell Gwen, try to speak up if you need help. Outside Empire State University, George's car is parked at the door. Glancing at the quiet and peaceful campus, George sighed helplessly, if it wasn't for the words of the lizard Peter. I don't worry about Gwen myself. As his wife said, Gwen is not a child now, and it's useless to hold on to it all the time. Soon, he saw Gwen coming out of the campus. Gwen, I'll come to pick you up from school these days. George didn't explain why, worried that Gwen would become morose about Peter again. Also, unexpectedly, Gwen agreed so readily. Gwen also knew that George was concerned about her own safety, so she definitely did not object to George's actions. George smiled knowingly. My own daughter has been so obedient since she was a child. After getting in the car, George was also chatting with Gwen along the way, and while chatting, George suddenly said, Gwen, do you know Lin? Gwen suddenly felt nervous. Does George already know something? Recognize, recognize. I'm a fan of his books. George pressed on. I mean do you know him personally? Dad, why did you suddenly ask this? That's right, haven't I been reading his novels recently? I remember you told me that he had been to your school for a book signing. So I want to ask, do you know him? Hearing this, Gwen let out a long breath. 
It turned out to be like this. Gwen flipped through her school bag. Dad, look. Taking advantage of the gap between the cars, George turned his head curiously and saw Gwen take out a copy of Harry Potter. Lynn's signature is impressively on the title page. This made George envious. After chasing books for this period of time, he also became a fan of Lynn's books and asked Gwen just to see if he could get an autograph. Why Harry Potter? Ah, Gwen didn't understand what George meant, isn't Harry Potter Lynn's book? If you get Lynn to sign, you should sign a Song of Ice and Fire. Apparently, George prefers a Song of Ice and Fire. Dad, don't you think you are also Lynn's book fan now? The keen George immediately caught a trace of intimacy in the words, you call Lynn, Lynn. Forehead. Our book clubs all call Lynn like this, Dad, don't change the subject, are you also a fan of Lynn's books? Gwen immediately changed the subject. It was absolutely impossible for George to admit it, so he could only say stubbornly, as your father, I just care about your star chasing situation. There is no book fan, I am a police officer, I don't read books that affect my work. If George knew about Gwen's current star chasing situation, he would probably stop angrily and go directly to find Lynn. Then fiercely, want a unique signature, really, dad, that's definitely, George continued to drive with some guilt, okay, don't talk to the driver while driving, I'll send you back quickly, there are still tasks for me to complete at the police station, that's fine. Gwen didn't talk about George either, she sat quietly in her seat and looked out the window at the scenery. At the moment, after sending Gwen back home, Lin saw that she was standing alone on the rooftop looking at the scenery in the distance. He also put on a white shirt, through which he could vaguely see the purple swimsuit inside. The lower body is naturally still bare thighs. This woman. That dress is his. Lin smiled, walked to the kitchen bar watched the wine on it until two glasses were poured out. Delicious milk tea must be delicious. But there are some atmospheres that only wine can adjust. On the rooftop, Lin walked to Chin's side and handed over the wine in her hand. Mr. Lin, why is it not milk tea this time? I think you seem to have something on your mind, so drinking some wine will make you feel better. This kind of thing can be edited. Chin took the wine in Lin's hand and took a sip. It's not as good as milk tea, but it's not bad. Is there any more? Definitely. Lin brought up two bottles. Drink together. Lin sat down together, he knew that Chin must have a lot of words in his heart, as a mutant excluded by society. It is impossible to say that there is no complaint in my heart. If he really had no complaints, the Phoenix Force would not have completely erupted later, changing from Phoenix to Dark Phoenix. Although that was a long time later. But it is also enough to see that Chin has been suppressing her emotions all these years. So once this emotion erupts, it will be devastating. So Lin isn't drinking with Jean right now. It's saving the world. Um, perfect and reasonable. The effect of alcohol is still very strong. After a few drinks, Chin is already a little tipsy. The chatterbox has also been completely opened up. Mr. Lin, I was really lucky to meet you at that dance. I feel like that encounter was destined. How to say? Lin took a sip of the wine lightly. Although alcohol doesn't make him drunk now, he really can't get used to the taste of wine. It's not that it's hard to drink. Just not used to it. Chin stood up from the chair holding the wine glass and looked at the distant scenery. In fact, before I met you, I felt that there was darkness in front of me. It's as if there is no place for me in this world. Or, I shouldn't have come to this world. As she said that, Chin's mood began to fluctuate. Vaguely, Lin felt an extremely powerful force. Is this Phoenix Force? Chin also seemed to feel this, and once again tried her best to calm down her emotions. What you may not know is that Charles has been on my guard the whole time. I have a spiritual cage set up by him on my body. Although I also know that he is doing it for my own good, I really don't like the feeling of being watched all the time. Even if Chin is an X-Men, she has a powerful Phoenix Force on her body. But in the final analysis, she is still a little girl in her 20s, what she needs is not all kinds of names. But someone who can protect her and understand her. This feeling, she felt here in Lin. Lin stood up and walked to Chin's side, so that's what I don't like about Charles. He's too cowardly. Chin also wanted to defend Professor X, but after seeing Lin's eyes, she didn't know where to start. 
She also defended last time, but she was completely dismantled by Lin. The power in you is yours. As a senior who uses psychic power, what he wants is not to teach you how to control this power, but to fear that this power will seal it for the first time. Chin looked at Lin in surprise. Mr. Lin, do you know? Definitely, I know a lot. If it was someone else now, Chin would definitely wonder why the other party knew so much. But getting along with her during this period of time made Chin understand that Lin didn't have any malice towards her. Lin never asked herself too much. How could I ask him these things? Lin continued, didn't you realize that the power in your body will only respond when your mood fluctuates? It is your strength, respond. It is also your heart. You shouldn't listen to Professor X to suppress it, but learn to feel it and control it. Chin, feel it, control it. This is something Chin never thought of. She used to grow up under the education of Professor X, so Professor X said that this force will bring disaster. She definitely believed it, but now the facts have proved that Professor X is not all right. But Lin, what if I can't control this force? Lin smiled lightly, it's okay, I'm here. These words, like a sharp sword, completely broke Chin's heart that had been defended for a long time. She had imagined countless times that someone could say this sentence to her. It finally came true today. Mr. Lin, thank you. Chin suddenly hugged Lin, buried her head in Lin's chest and began to cry. To vent the emotions that have been accumulated over the years. All of a sudden, countless emotions found an outlet and spewed out along with the tears. Instead of expressing it in the form of Phoenix Force. If the current Professor X can feel Chin's mood, he will surely send out all the X-Men in fright. It's a pity that Professor X has been completely disconnected from Chin under the super suppressive magnetic field. Lin hugged the piano, feeling the feeling conveyed in front. While it usually doesn't seem like much of a difference, Lin can now be sure of one thing. Hmm, hers is bigger. This should be right. Half an hour later, Chin's mood improved a lot, and she looked at Lin with tears in her eyes. This time it wasn't Lin who took the initiative, but Chin raised her toes and sealed Lin's lips. Compared with Gwen, Chin is much bolder. Maybe it's because she has encountered more things so she is more mature. Or maybe Lin has opened up her heart completely. In short, what is the reason, only Chin himself knows. All Lin could do was respond to Jean, then picked her up and carried her back to the room. Mr. Lin, this is the first time I. Okay, I'll be gentle. Xavier's school. Professor X in the principal's office tried to contact Chin again, but found that he couldn't get in touch again. But there was no sense of anxiety in his heart. Forget it, maybe it's a good thing for Chin. After accepting Lin's idea, Professor X also found that he had made too many mistakes before. It was so wrong. At this moment Logan knocked on the door and walked in. Charles, Jean hasn't come back yet. Do you need me to find it? Didn't you say you didn't want to go? Logan glanced at Professor X, this guy is shameless. But after all, Chin is also his teammate, and Logan will definitely be worried if he doesn't come back so late. It's okay, Chin will come back when she wants to come back on 4.9. Quote question mark quote. Logan looked at Professor X in disbelief. Is this still the Professor X he knew? Why does he seem to be a different person? If it hadn't been for sure that Professor X would not be controlled by others, Logan would want to go deep into Wolverine's wolf paw and ask him a good question. Charles, you've changed. Hearing Logan's words, Professor X also smiled slightly. Yeah, it's time to change. I was too naive before, and I was wrong. From now on. Early the next morning, Lin woke up in bed, fast asleep. Obviously, she had a hard time last night, but now she doesn't have the resilience of Gwen. So I still need to sleep for a while. Lin stretched her waist and walked out of the room, leaving the moment of tranquility to Chin. After about an hour, the door of the room opened, and Chin came out of the room. There was a hint of laziness and relaxation in the tone. Good morning, Mr. Lin. Good morning, come down to have breakfast first, and replenish your energy. Chin smiled lightly. Okay, Mr. Lin. Lin also wanted to correct Jean's name last night, but Jean said that's what she wanted to call Lin. So Lin acquiesced. Everyone calls it differently, isn't it more fun? Do you need to go back to Xavier's school later? Chin thought for a while. Yes, Mr. Lin will send me to the outer ring, and I will go in by myself. 
Obviously, Jean doesn't want Lin to have access to the Professor X and X-Men people now. Lin didn't have this idea either, so she acquiesced. In the car, Chin kissed Lin on the cheek. The course here is over, and I will go back to the manor. Okay, waiting for you to come back. Early in the morning. After George sent Gwen to school, he returned to the police station. The police station is busy now. All looking for the location of Peter the Lizard. But unfortunately, nothing has been found until now, and the location of the lizard Peter cannot be found at all. George also knew in his heart that trying to find Peter the lizard by searching the sewers in this way was tantamount to finding a needle in a haystack. But this is also an unavoidable solution at this stage. After returning to his office, George continued to observe the construction map of the sewer. Try to find Peter the lizard's hiding place on it. But obviously this is difficult to do. After observing for a long time, George rubbed his eyes tiredly. Suddenly the office door was pushed open. Professor Connors. George didn't know what he was doing to him so early in the morning, and he looked out of breath. Captain George. Quote dot 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 quote. Connors looked out of breath, forced a sigh of relief and said, I know Peter, where is he going to implement his plan? I see. George stood up from his chair and immediately pulled Connors in. Connors picked up the water glass on the table and took a sip of himself, then rummaged through George's desk to find a map of New York City. I was thinking all day yesterday, if Peter wants to infect all mankind, where is the best way to start? At first I saw him hiding in the sewers and thought he was planning to attack New York City's water supply. It's not unreasonable for you to think so. George also thinks it is possible, after all, drinking water is the source of life for a city. Yes, but I just found out that Peter has another way. A surefire way to quickly infect an entire city. George's face changed immediately, how to do it. Diffusion of spores at the highest point in New York City, the spores will spread into the clouds and enter the ground with rainfall. In other words, he's coming here. George glanced at the place Connors was pointing at, and blurted out, World Trade Center Building 1. There is the O5TH floor, the tallest building in New York City. P.S. At the moment Tony's Stark Industrial Building is not finished yet. That's right, so that means we just have to sit here and wait for Peter to come over. Otherwise, our search would be of no use other than wasting police force. Connors, are you sure? Connors nodded vigorously, very sure of his guess. After pondering for a while, George immediately rang his office phone, call everyone to prepare for a meeting. Xavier's school. Back here, Chin took the initiative to come to Professor X's office after class. Professor. Professor X raised his head, and the moment he saw Chin, his eyes lit up instantly. Because he discovered that the frantic ability originally hidden in the violin calmed down a lot. At least not so grumpy. Who is his friend? It can also help Mutant find a way out in the future, and it can also help Chin suppress the Phoenix Force in her body. It seems that letting Chin make friends with him is the most correct choice. Maybe it's a mutant whose strength far surpasses him and Magneto. Chin, sit down. Professor X smiled lightly, the Phoenix Force on the piano calmed down, and the burden in his heart was relieved a lot. What do you want me to do? Chin was taken aback for a moment, but Professor X didn't mention the fact that she didn't come back last night at all. Since Professor X didn't mention it, she didn't bother to talk about it. He directly stated his request. Professor, I want to move out and live outside. No problem, when will you move? Such an answer made Chin even more confused. Is this person in front of me really Professor X? It can't be Mystique. Why did it seem like he was negotiating with the former Professor X, even agreeing to move out? Do not ask. Professor X knows without thinking, it must be moved to that friend's side. With such a strong friend, Professor X definitely won't stop it. It's too late to be happy. Maybe in the future, with the help of Chin's relationship, I might be able to seek some help from the other party within my ability. Especially now, the other party can help Chin control the Phoenix Force. That is much stronger than myself. So instead of saying that Professor X is agreeing to move Chin out, it is better to say that he is making a very new type of investment. If possible, I would like to move after school in the afternoon. No problem, do you need help? The current attitude of Professor X can be said to be good and messed up, which makes the piano a little inappropriate. 
But he didn't get too entangled in this matter, which happened to be what Chen wanted. No, I don't have anything. Okay, if you are unhappy living outside, you can come back at any time. Chin has a strange face. Professor, I just moved out, it's not that I won't come back. I'm still going to come back and teach. How do you feel that Professor X is looking forward to leaving by himself? After leaving the principal's office, Chin still doubts whether Professor X is real or not. But the psychic power told her that what Professor X said was true. Could it be that the professor has really changed his gender? Shaking her head, Chin stopped thinking about it. In any case, at least the current result is good. Afternoon. Chin left Xavier's school alone, and only Professor X and Logan came out to see him off. The other X-Men don't know about it for now. Professor X didn't intend to make it known to everyone. After watching Jean leave, Logan pushed Professor X back. In the past, this work was often done by Chin. Chin is rarely in Xavier's school now, and it's time for Professor X to think about finding someone else to be his assistant. Logan, are you interested in? Not interested, needless to say, don't want to do it. Refuse to triple. Logan is old and smart, and Professor X knows what he is farting by moving his butt. Facing Logan's three consecutive rejections, Professor X didn't say any more. Along the way, many mutant teenagers greeted the two of them, and the two responded kindly. After pushing Professor X to the principal's office, Logan was stopped by Professor X just as he was about to leave. Logan, just a second. Charles, I just said no. Professor X smiled and continued, now X-Men and Mutant Brotherhood are ready to cooperate. However, the Mutant Brotherhood's identity is too sensitive to enter New York City directly with swagger. What do you think there is a way? Logan walked back to the office and sat down, casually said, there is no way. Professor X's face froze. I know there is no way, but it doesn't have to be so direct. Anyway, think about it pretendingly, don't you? Charles, just tell me what you have. The two of us have known each other for so long, don't I know what you look like? Logan, don't think so badly of me. I hope you can act as a middleman between the two forces, so as to act as a buffer. Let the X-Men and the Mutant Brotherhood get acquainted with each other, so that it only takes one chance for us to fully come to the bright side. I have a feeling that this opportunity is not far away. Professor X's consideration is not without reason, after all, X-Men and Mutant Brotherhood were deadly rivals before this. Even if there are leaders on both sides shaking hands and making peace. But everyone in Mutant has a violent temper, and they might start fighting if they disagree with each other. To put it bluntly, I hope that there is someone who can make peace. But since it was for Mutant's future, Logan thought about it and stood up, I'll think about it. After speaking, he left the principal's office. With this sentence, Professor X knows that it is stable. Logan knew him, and he knew Logan. It is no exaggeration to say that he is the person who knows Logan best in the world, nothing above him. With Logan making peace between the two mutant factions, the next thing to do will be a lot easier. Chin, I hope you have a good time outside. To be honest, Professor X is a bit reluctant to accept. Lin Manor. At the dining table, Lin took the two girls to eat together. Really? Sister Chin, you will move here in the future. Even Gwen was a little excited. Jean is the only one who knows the secret that she is Spider-Man, so she can often share many things in the future. Although I can talk to Lin, but the two girls can talk more. Gwen, didn't you say your dad won't let you go out now? You're really fine in history. Speaking of this, Gwen instantly raised her proud little head. Red Queen, tell them. The projection of the Red Queen appeared. Miss Gwen asked me for a projection device to project my own image in the room. As long as no one touches Miss Gwen, there won't be any problems. Meanwhile, Gwen's home. Gwen's mother knocked on Gwen's door with a piece of warm milk and biscuits, and saw that Gwen was still reading. Gwen, rest early. Thanks mom. Mother Gwen put the things down and closed the door behind her, and went downstairs to pick up the phone she hadn't hung up. Don't worry, Gwen is still in the room, and she hasn't left since she came back after dinner. Of course it was George on the phone. If Gwen knows that I am spying on her, she will definitely be angry. George also sighed helplessly. No way, it's also for Gwen's good. In this regard, Gwen's mother can only nod her head. 
For the sake of Gwen, she doesn't care even if she is found out. Piece of. Well, I'm smart. Chin didn't ask Gwen, but looked at Lin. You taught her. In Chin's opinion, only Lin can come up with such a bad idea. Lin waved her hand. It's not me, it's her own thinking. To be honest, Lin never thought of this step before. It has to be said that girls' brains are the most flexible when they want to do bad things. Jean nodded Gwen's head. There are so many bad ideas. Gwen stuck out her tongue. Continue to accompany the two to eat. After eating and drinking, Lin came to the rooftop and naturally handed over the washing and tidying up to the two girls. Sign in. Sign in successfully. Get the artificial intelligence Skynet. You can integrate upgrade with the Red Queen to become a new artificial intelligence or choose the dominant consciousness. Note. After integrating, there is a chance to generate self-awareness and realize mechanical deification, but it is still the most loyal artificial intelligence of the host. Another artificial intelligence, not just another person. Artificial intelligence, and it is also a world-killing one. One is to destroy the world with a virus. One is to destroy the world with robots. Now it's all alive. Artificial intelligence that produces self-awareness is kind of interesting. Lin smiled and said, the Red Queen. Master, I am. The projection of the Red Queen immediately appeared beside Lin, and Lin looked at the image of the little girl in the red dress. He smiled and asked, do you want to upgrade your database? It's all at the master's will. Then go ahead with the data upgrade. You can use all the data in Skynet as your upgrade material. Okay, master. Queen Red slowly closed her eyes, and some blues 010 numbers began to appear on her body. Those are the Skynet data. Being absorbed and integrated by the Red Queen. A three-hour countdown also appeared above the Red Queen's head. In three hours, Lin will get a more powerful artificial intelligence. At this time Chin and Gwen also walked to the rooftop, and at the same time noticed the Red Queen with her eyes closed and a countdown on her head. Lin, what happened to the Red Queen? Compared with Chin who just met Honghu, Gwen and Honghu have a deeper relationship, and asked with some worry. Don't worry, Queen Red is upgrading. After the upgrade, the data algorithm will become stronger and more humanized. Really? Gwen obviously doesn't know much about information technology 963. But Lin said no problem, then it must be no problem. The three of them sat down together, chatting while waiting for the upgrade of Queen Red to be completed. At the same time, the tallest building in New York, George has already taken a large group of police officers to squat around. He also greeted the management of the World Trade Center. Everyone cheer up and pay attention to every corner. Report immediately if there is any change. Clear. Beside George, Connors also looked nervous. Normally speaking, the morning is not the best time to act. The time for spore culture is only a few days. So I'm guessing that either tonight or tomorrow night Peter will be here to carry out his plans. George also said, I hope your judgment is correct, now all our police forces are concentrated here. In case your judgment is wrong, Peter didn't choose to be in the sky, but chose to attack the water source. Then everything we're doing now will be in vain. Connors also understood, but he was extremely sure in his heart that Peter would definitely come here. Absolutely. Underground drainage system of the World Trade Center. On the platform, the lizard Peter completed the molting again, and his body became stronger again. As soon as the pheromones in his mouth were spit out, the lizard Peter found that there were a lot of human pheromones outside. One of them he knows best. Comma. Because Connor's blood remained on his paws before. Professor Connors, you really brought them here. Don't worry, soon you will become the first members of my new world. Peter looked at the spore nebulizer beside him with satisfaction, and soon the regenerative gene spores that could evolve the whole world into lizardmen would be produced here. Spider-Man, I hope you won't continue to spoil my good deeds tomorrow. Now, I can definitely defeat you. After the second molt, the lizard Peter felt he was fine again. Boge. On the rooftop, Gwen sneezed for no reason. But still looking at the Red Queen with piercing eyes, because the number on the Red Queen's head counts down to the last 10 seconds. 5. 1. After integrating Skynet, Queen Red opened her eyes, and the pupils of Red had turned into blue at this time. The red skirt on the body also has some more blue flower patterns. Gwen walked over and looked at it curiously, the Red Queen. 
I'm here, Miss Gwen. Very good. Gwen didn't notice. But both Lin and Chin changed their expressions at the same time, because they found that the Red Queen's answer lacked a sense of procedural mechanics. There is more of a human feeling. Lin understands that the Red Queen really has self-awareness. Mr. Lin. Lin raised her hand, stopped Chin from continuing to ask, and just said lightly, normal phenomenon. Early the next morning, Lin woke up from the bed alone, and Gwen and Jean chatted in another room all night last night. The Red Queen was also in their room. This is also what Lin requested. After awakening the self-aware Red Queen, she needs to spend more time with human beings to make awakening more thorough. As soon as she went out, Lin saw Chin downstairs wearing a white shirt, preparing breakfast in the coolness below. The collar of the white shirt has not been buttoned. With the weight of the piano, Lin stood upstairs condescendingly and saw clearly. Mr. Lin, you're awake. I've already made breakfast for the two of us, and I'm going to wake you up if you haven't woken up yet. Lin laughed. How are you going to wake me up? Chin glanced at Lin resentfully, and didn't want to talk. She knew that Lin must be thinking bad things again. Gwen has gone to school, come down for breakfast. I don't have class today, go shopping with me after dinner. Good. Lin answered simply. The previous pianos were all in Xavier's school, and rarely came out to get in touch with the colorful world outside. Now that she has come out, she definitely wants to enjoy life well, and enjoy the life that a girl of her age should have. It just so happened that Chin moved out of Xavier's school without any clothes, and Lin took her to buy some clothes by the way. You can't wear your own white shirt every day, can you? Wrong. It seems that it is not impossible. After eating, Chin first said, My craftsmanship is probably not as good as Mr. Lin's. It's okay, occasionally I want to eat breakfast made for me by others. Chin smiled happily, sat next to Lin and kissed her. Lin was taken aback for a moment, Chin really became more and more active, it seems that she was depressed in Xavier's school for too long. The beauty is in my arms, definitely don't have to bear it. There is no need to pick a place, the dining table is very good. Two hours later, Jean took a shower and changed and came out of the bathroom holding Lin's arm. Mr. Lin, let's go. Some people wake up, eat breakfast, and get ready to go out after exercising. And some people just woke up. After sleeping until dawn, Tony came out of his bedroom, feeling more relaxed and comfortable than ever. J-A-R-V-I-S, how long have I been asleep? 20 hours, sir. How long have I slept? Even Tony couldn't believe it, this should be the first time in his life that he slept for so long. Not to mention, it's quite comfortable. During this period, you had a total of 116 missed calls and 70 messages that were not checked in time. These are Tony's orders, and any information will disturb him while he is sleeping. J-A-R-V-I-S is also doing this dutifully. Is there a call from Pepper? No, sir. The disappointment in Tony's eyes was visible to the naked eye, and he thought that Pepper would take the initiative to find him after being out of contact for so long. I didn't expect to be passionate about myself. It never occurred to him that he used to lose contact for five or six days without any news. Except for the kidnapped time. The other little Peppers didn't know where he went. Among them, Colonel Rhodes made 96 phone calls and sent 53 text messages. Tony drank a glass of sober wine, with a hint of disgust in his eyes, call him back. Okay, sir. As soon as he dialed out, the phone was answered, oh thank god Tony, you finally answered my call. Why, do you think I was kidnapped again? Rhodes on the other end of the phone had a strange expression on his face, isn't this your PTSD? Why do I have the courage to raise it myself now? But Rhodes was too lazy to delve into this matter, listen Tony, First of all I want to apologize to you, I took Zahn without your permission. Although I really like it. Seeing him apologizing, Tony said aggressively, simple, bring all those bottles of wine you hid. Rhodes knew that Tony would blackmail him at this time. As a soldier, that thing is his absolute treasure. But who let themselves be wrong first? Three bottles. Asterisk five bottles. Four hash. Good deal, Colonel Rhodes, I believe you didn't call to apologize to me. If you apologize sincerely, you should bring Mark II back to me. Tony joked. Knowing Rhodes for so many years, he knows Rhodes's personality very well, although he is usually as out of tune as himself. 
but there are many things that are still very honest. Sorry, Tony, Rhodes said with apology. Mark II is now being detained by the authorities, and they want to reform him. Sad news. There was no anger in Tony's tone, and Rhodes could hear it. No, Tony, aren't you angry? That thing is yours. Rhodes knew that what Tony hated the most was when others used his brains on his genius inventions and designs. There was once a country that bought weapons from Stark Industries and thought that some areas needed to be improved. Tony just tore up the contract. You must know that it is an arms order of tens of billions or even hundreds of billions of dollars. How many people can't get what they want? Tony just didn't sell it because the other party made such a small opinion. Obadiah's mouth was crooked at that time. Sent you off, Rhodes. For the sake of a few bottles of wine, it's your freedom to change it like this now, but you'd better change his name, not the same as mine. You know I hate bumping shirts, even bumping names. Rode wondered if he heard it wrong, Mark II gave him away. After finishing speaking, Rhodes had no choice but to continue asking, Tuo Dian hung up the phone. After cheating Rhodes with a few bottles of wine, Tony said, J-A-R-V-I-S, open the roof. I'm going to go up to bask in the sun, the weather is fine today. Thinking of Lin's state of life last time, Tony couldn't help being envious. Now I don't have to worry about palladium poisoning. Also enjoy it in your own home, put on your sunglasses, Tony took the wine and walked up to the rooftop. Sea breeze, sunshine, Tony, who had just woken up, couldn't help stretching on the recliner. That feeling, it can only be described in one word. That is, cool, no wonder Lin loves to bask in the sun. I thought you went somewhere again, but I didn't expect you to just bask in the sun here. I have so many things on hand, so I should work hard. I shouldn't have come to your side early in the morning. The figure of Little Pepper suddenly sounded from behind, making Tony turn his head quickly, hi, Pepper. Together, Tony kindly invited two, behind Little Pepper, Black Widow and Happy Follow. Now there are two of them, one is Xiao Jili's personal assistant, and the other is Xiao Jili's driver. Seeing Tony's face, Pepper sat beside Tony in surprise. Hey, you seem to be a little different. Tony took off his glasses and asked with a smile, are you more handsome? No, it's just different. Pepper could feel that Wang Ding's whole mental outlook had taken on a new look. It's like a different person. No, I still feel the same as before. What do you think, Natasha Romanoff? Happy grumbled. In his opinion, there is no other difference except that his mood is a little better. Oddly enough, Black Widow didn't respond to his words. Happy turned his head suspiciously, and saw Black Widow sizing up Tony. Feeling jealous all of a sudden. Well, he is indeed more handsome than me. And what Natasha Romanoff had in mind was. Tony's palladium poisoning symptoms were much reduced. It should be the reason why the steel armor was not used during this period of time. But why, he seems to be in a good mood, which doesn't look like a dying person at all. Not actively looking for solutions. Instead, bask in the sun at home. Could it be that Tony has started to give up on himself? Black Widow had a lot of doubts in her heart, but it was destined that she couldn't take the initiative to ask now. I can only wait until I leave here and report these situations to Nick Fury. After Little Pepper confirmed that Tony was fine, she also smiled happily in her heart. The Tony some time ago gave her a feeling of worry, but now this Tony is right. Okay, I still have work to do. I go first. Little Pepper got up and waved away. Tony did not forget to say, well, do you have time to have dinner together tonight? Just eat here. Little Pepper had a smile on his face. Definitely, but I want you to wait for me. I might be back later. No problem, I can wait no matter how late. After everyone left, Tony said, J-A-R-V-I-S, how about the matching test of the new elements? Sir, everything is fine at the moment. No problems found. New Mark VI armor document, my mind is full of inspiration now. The emergence of new elements, stronger power output. It means that Mark VI and the future Mark armor will have more possibilities. Shield. Nick Fury and Hill listen in on Tony and Rod's conversation in the office. Although they can't hack J-A-R-V-I-S, they can hack Rod's cell phone. As a major of the Air Force of the beautiful country, he has no secrets at all in the high-level institutions of the beautiful country. 
After listening, Nick Fury frowned. Could it be that this is Tony's mess? This is a bit different from the Tony he knew, and he gave up on himself too quickly. Hill analyzed. Maybe he also realized that he was powerless, so he just let it go. When shall we contact him? Nick Fury waved his hand. Don't worry, wait for the news from the Romanov agent. People like Tony shouldn't give up so easily. He is also Howard's son. Quote. When he said this, Nick Fury looked at the S.H.I.E.L.D. logo not far away. S.H.I.E.L.D. has three founders. One of them was Tony's father, Howard Stark. And he's one of the men who created Captain America Legendary's life. While waiting, Black Widow's message also came back. Hi, Romanov, you reported that you went to Tony's house, how is he doing now? Black Widow recounted what he saw just now. Finally, I added my own opinion. The symptoms of palladium poisoning on his face will be alleviated, which should be the reason why he hasn't used the steel armor recently and has been taking leaf green juice. On his desk, I also found an empty cup with chlorophyll. After listening to it, Nick Fury's eyes were a little disappointed. He didn't expect Tony to really mess up. Tonight's dinner may be a kind of farewell ceremony for him and Pepper Potts. From what S.H.I.E.L.D. gathered, Tony wasn't the kind of person who would wait for someone late. So there is only one possibility in Nick Fury's judgment. That means Tony is about to die and ready to eat. That's why everything he's doing now doesn't fit his personality. As the king of agents without emotion, Nick Fury uses his own rationality to judge most problems. So he didn't think that people like Tony Stark would really change much after experiencing life and death. The most intuitive point is that, Tony rejected S.H.I.E.L.D.'s proposal in a very high-profile way, and declared himself to be Iron Man in public. So in Nick Fury's view, he is still the arrogant and supercilious Tony Stark. Romanov, take a chance. It's time for us to meet Tony again. Nick Fury feels like he has everything under control. Only by sending charcoal in the snow can I become Tony's savior, and then draw Tony into Avengers. Clear. Black Widow hung up the communication. Although Nick Fury's analysis is reasonable, Black Widow always feels weird there. But just can't tell. But it doesn't matter, just execute the orders from above. Sunset. Lin took Chin back to the manor, both of them were not ordinary people. Even after a day of shopping, I don't feel tired at all. Chin, Li Qian's gets more and more excited the more she visits, and wants to buy everything she sees, so that she can't fit the real things in the car. Lin had to ask someone to send it back. Back home, Chin still had an unconcealable look of excitement on her face. Mr. Lin, do you know? Today is my happiest day, the feeling of shopping is really great. This is a thrill that I have never felt in Xavier's school before. That feeling of stress. She finally understood why so many women like to go shopping. I just went there for the first time, and I fell in love with this feeling deeply. At this time, Gwen also came back from the door swinging the cobweb, and saw the two people in the family, Lin, Sister Chen. I'm back. Gwen, I bought something for you today too. Come here and take a look. When the two women met, they immediately shared the things they bought today. Lin shook her head with a smile, sure enough, no matter which world a woman is, she is a woman with super abilities. Personality is the same, but, before they met Lin, they were both girls, not women. Being a woman is all thanks to Lin. Seeing the two sharing the results, Lin relaxed her shoulders and was ready to walk towards the kitchen. It's evening now, definitely coming for a nice dinner. But the projection of the Red Queen appeared between the two women. He looked at Gwen solemnly. The Red Queen has now begun to use expressions to express her emotions. Miss Gwen, Peter Parker has appeared. It's in the basement of the China World Trade Center, and it's secretly moving towards the top floor. After speaking, a picture is projected. Above the lizard Peter is crawling on the wall, moving quickly. He also carried something on his back. Gwen immediately put down the clothes in her hand, ready to put on the hood to stop the lizard Peter. Wait a minute, Gwen. Lin, what's wrong? Lin came out with a box, put this on and go. Sewer. The lizard Peter looked at the spore atomizer in front of him, and there was a set of percentage numbers jumping on it. The value has been displayed to 99%. It will be ready soon. In the eyes of the lizard with vertical pupils, there was a look of incomparable excitement. 
Half an hour later, the number above jumped again, and immediately reached 100%. Without the slightest hesitation, the sharp claws in the hands of the lizard Peter directly cut off the wires above. There was a burst of electric sparks. Soon Peter the lizard secured the entire spore atomizer to his back. Let the whole world join me in the glorious evolution. The lizard Peter carried the spore regeneration gene behind him, climbed up a passage, and entered the basement of the International Trade Building. Crouching on the ceiling, avoiding the patrol of security personnel. One or two of them who almost spotted him were also bitten off by him silently. Continue to move towards the top floor of the China World Trade Center. Outside the China World Trade Center. George still led the police officers to squat here for nearly 20 hours. Going to bed all over again. Still no one noticed any movement around them. Professor Connors, are you really sure Peter will start his project here? George is at a loss now. After all, after squatting for so long, there was no movement at all. Even if he, George, had good patience, others would inevitably complain. There have been several yin and yang voices from the walkie-talkie just now. Why listen to a person who has no experience in handling cases? Or is it possible for the two to be together? If it weren't for George's pressure, everyone would probably want to go back now. Squatting is always the most boring of all police station tasks, but it is also the safest. But after being bored for a long time, most people will feel that it is not as dangerous as it is. At least you don't have to sit in the car and stare, and your back hurts from sitting. It is a double torture of body and mind. Seeing that the sky was gradually getting late, in order to appease the emotions of his subordinates, Yinji planned to send some of them back to the doctor first. Those who stay are in the form of a shift change. At this moment, a voice that was unfamiliar to everyone came out from the walkie-talkie. There seems to be something on the monitor, in the basement. People who are patrolling nearby, please answer. This time, let G come to the spirit. Their walkie-talkie channel was connected to the security channel of the International Trade Building, and now this voice appeared on the opposite side. Just said, Lizard Peter appears. Teams 1 and 2 stayed outside and blocked all surrounding sewer entrances. People from the third team, bring new weapons and enter the international trade building with me. Seeing 207 George getting off the bus, Connors hurried down too. As George put on his equipment, he threw the other pistol in his hand to Connors. Will it work? Connors nodded. Yes, if you want to become a military doctor, the use of weapons is also a necessary course. That's good protect yourself at the same time as us. At this time, a voice came from the intercom again, the people patrolling the basement have been lost. No, what is that? Then there was a scream, and after the scream, there was a crunching sound like chewing something. George's face darkened instantly. If Lizard Peter continues like this, there is really no turning back. Everyone, are you ready? Ready, act now. A group of well-equipped police officers immediately entered the International Trade Building, and George did not forget to let the security personnel evacuate the building. Compared to Osborne Industries, the people here are too talkative. Attention ITC security, we are NYPD and there is an out-of-control mutant in your building right now. Get out immediately, immediately. The security personnel inside, when they heard that the mutant was out of control, immediately panicked. Escape also ran out of the China World Trade Center. Watching the police officers rush in one by one, I immediately knew that the other party was not joking. George immediately stopped a person. Where is that monster now? Where is your leader? A relatively obese person stopped immediately. I'm the person in charge. That big guy is going upstairs now. Get ready to go upstairs. Director George and the others have already entered the China World Trade Center, and Peter Parker is heading towards the roof. The Red Queen reported the situation in the China World Trade Center in real time. Gwen looked at what looked like a suitcase in front of her, and opened it under Lin's gaze. After opening it, Gwen's eyes were unbelievable. There is actually a brand new spider battlesuit inside, and it is full of a sense of future technology. Lin, this is. Lin said, let the Red Queen explain to you. Ghost 2 Spider Battlesuit is made of brand new fiber material, which is not only full of elasticity, but also has strong air permeability and toughness. The newly developed cobwebs launcher no longer just launches a single cobweb structure, 
but can release different cobwebs by controlling the electric current. The battle suit itself is also connected to my neural network, so that I can cooperate with Miss Gwen to fight together. Awesome. Gwen simply loves the battle suit in front of her. Compared with this, the suit on my body is like picking up in a garbage dump. There was no time to run to the room to change, so Gwen immediately took off her spider battle suit. Although there is still a backing inside, but still can make people breathe fire. Chin subconsciously covered Lin's eyes, Lin shrugged helplessly, it's not like she didn't see it. Never mind, play whatever you want. After putting it on, Gwen was a little confused. Because the ghost too in front of me seems to be too big. Baggy. Even Chin is a bit strange, is this really a new battle suit for Gwen? Miss Gwen, press the signature icon on the chest. Signature icon. Gwen immediately noticed that there was a Lin's signature on the chest, which was the little Easter egg left by Lin when designing. With a light touch, the ghost number two worn on Gwen's body immediately shrank, and it fit perfectly with Gwen's body. So cool. Gwen couldn't help but sigh again. What's cool is not only this wearable design, but also the scene in front of me has completely changed. In addition to seeing more clearly, there are also various data analysis, and the position of the voice of the Red Queen has become very three-dimensional. Miss Gwen, let's go. The nearest route has been planned for you. Thank you, Queen Red, let's go then. Gwen rushed to the balcony and jumped down, the cobweb in her hand shot out, and quickly disappeared into the night. She can feel that the cobweb's launcher is not only faster now. Even cobweb's resilience has been raised by more than a level. Along the way, the Red Queen continued to introduce various functions of the new battle suit while guiding the way. The purpose is to let Gwen get familiar with this new battle suit quickly. Gwen looked at the dazzling array of functions that appeared in front of her eyes, and she almost ran out of brains for a while. There are hundreds of new spider webs alone. Who can be familiar with this at once? Fortunately, the Red Queen comforted. Don't worry, Miss Gwen. During the battle, I will assist you in using various functions, so you can use them with confidence. All right, Queen, let's beat that guy who went astray together. Jean, Gwen's gone. You can take your hands off now. After taking the handle away, pick up the spider battle suit that Gwen dropped on the ground, although this piece may not be used in the future. But after all, it was made by Gwen himself, so there is a different meaning in it. How kind of you to Gwen, Mr. Lin. When she said this, Chin looked at Lin with a complaining face, and Lin also smelled a little sour from it. Did I treat you badly? Lin walked over and put an arm around Chin's waist. That extremely aggressive look immediately made Chin feel a little scared. Mr. Lin, hello and me. But I haven't recovered yet, so come back later. The toss in the morning has not recovered yet. Who believes this? But since Chin begged for mercy, Lin definitely wouldn't continue to mess around, because he saw that Chin had other meanings. What? Worried about Gwen? Chin nodded. Gwen is still young, and he doesn't have enough combat experience. So I'm worried about. Compared with this X-Men who has experienced strong winds and waves, Gwen's combat experience is like that of a primary school student. It's not unreasonable for Jean to be worried. Then let's go there together, as long as we hide in the dark and don't come out, it won't affect AFD Gwen. If there is an accident, you can also go to support immediately. Um, Chin nodded happily. Although she is worried about Gwen, she also understands that to let Gwen grow up, she just needs to act appropriately. No need for direct help. Soon Chin got into Lin's car and drove towards the World Trade Center. Inside the World Trade Center, Connors followed behind George, and beside them was a technician from the police station. The cameras at the World Trade Center are being hacked with computers. Isn't it all right? George asked anxiously. Now they can't find the lizard Peter, although they know that his goal is the top floor. But if he can be intercepted on the middle floor, that would be the best result. Immediately, the technician was also sweating profusely. This kind of work is really not done by humans. But soon, the screen full of codes jumps. Several pictures appeared on the screen. It worked. The lizard man is now. Suddenly, the technician's face changed, because he was monitoring the backs of the three of them. And on the ceiling, there is another huge amount of black shadow. Up there, George and Connors were also taken aback and raised their heads together. 
Sure enough, the lizard Peter was looking straight at them, with bloodthirsty lust in his eyes. Long time no see, George Uncle, Professor Connors. Lizard Peter greeted warmly, and then moved down from the ceiling. The Georges had distanced themselves from him. Connors continued to persuade, Peter, don't continue to make mistakes. Quickly stop. No, Professor Connors, what I'm fulfilling now is your wish. As soon as he said this, George looked at Connors with some doubts, and Connors explained, Once upon a time, when Peter and I were talking about the application of regenerative genetic medicine, I once said that if the regenerative gene medicine can be injected into all human beings, all human beings will not feel the pain of illness. Indeed, it is uncomfortable to cut there, and it will be fine to grow new ones. In fact, during the years when Connors lost his arm, the discrimination he received somewhat made his heart a little extreme. It was also at this moment that George finally understood why Connors was so sure that the lizard Peter would come here. You guys who do scientific research are all lunatics. Say what you say, and what you scold. Now it's Peter who's doing bad things, and George definitely won't take it out on Connors. He just raised the new weapon in his hand and aimed at the lizard Peter. Peter, it's too late to stop now. Put things down and follow me. Lizard Peter glanced at George, and then said a word out of nowhere. Uncle George, you probably look down on me too. George's face darkened, not understanding what Peter was talking about. But still explained, Peter, I never meant that. But the lizard Peter still smiled disdainfully, looking at the French windows not far away, it's going to rain soon. You guys just rest here now and wait for the evolution. With that said, the lizard Peter launched an attack. The sharp claws in his hand slammed towards George and Connors, and the technician didn't have a weapon in his hand. While they were chatting, they had already hid. Get out of the way. George pushed away the dazed Connors, and immediately pulled the trigger himself, and a burst of flame spurted out from the musket in his hand. Fear of fire is almost the instinct of all creatures. Even the mutated lizard Peter is no exception. On the contrary, because of the animal nature, the fear of flames is even greater. The moment he saw the flames erupting, the lizard Peter immediately withdrew his claws and backed away. But a lot of sparks still splashed onto his tattered clothes. Flames sprang up in him. The lizard Peter yanked and ripped off all the clothes on his upper body, you want to kill me. Peter, if you continue to be obsessed like this, I will definitely kill you. Seeing that muskets are useful, the confidence of Yinji is also determined. I'll say it one last time, put down what's behind you and surrender immediately. At this time, Peter noticed that more and more people gathered towards this floor. It's pretty close to the top floor, so Lizard Peter doesn't want to waste time with George in this kind of place. He grabbed a desk beside him and threw it at George. With sharp eyes and quick hands, George rolls and evades dangerously. The office desk directly smashed the window and smashed down. After George adjusted his figure, the lizard Peter had disappeared in place. At this time, more and more police officers gathered. George said right away, the flames will work for that guy, all of you come up to the attic with me. Stay here without fire weapons. The implication is obvious, Connors stay. Connors said stubbornly, Director George, I want to go up with you. George didn't bother to pay attention to him, and led the team to continue towards the top floor. Top floor. Lizard Peter has already arrived here, looking at the gathered dark clouds, Lizard Peter smiled very happily. Next, just release the spores here. The spores will integrate into the clouds, and then fall to the ground along the rainfall. Your own plan is complete. Suddenly, the Lizard Peter felt a coolness behind him, and he slammed down. A blue needle flew directly over and landed on the water tank not far away. Look at that humble needle. Biological instincts terrified Peter. Turning around abruptly, I saw Spider-Man standing not far away. Spider-Man, you're so quick, do you have spider telepathy too? Although Gwen made fun of it like this, it was still a pity that the setting was right. Fortunately, the number of research and development of the Red Queen is still. What a shame, Gwen almost won. Chin in the car also saw what happened on the top floor through Gwen's perspective. It is a pity that this blow failed. At the same time, Chin also looked at Lin suspiciously. Mr. Lin, does this lizard man have the same ability as Gwen's spider sensing ability? Gwen had demonstrated this very special ability in front of Chin before. 
Gwen turned her back to Jean and let Jean attack her. As a result, Gwen dodged, without the assistance of any equipment. And this ability, does the lizard Peter have it? The answer is definitely no. Lin also shook her head. As far as I know, this ability seems to be only available to Gwen. Then why did the lizard man just now? Professional things, definitely need people in the professional field to answer. The Red Queen's voice came from the poison speaker. When any species is facing the risk of extinction, there will be an almost instinctive warning. But the probability of this happening is also very low. Just now Peter Parker had such an early warning. I see. Chin nodded with a half understanding. The Red Queen continued to explain. Miss Gwen's spider telepathy has existed for a long time, and anyone who attacks her can be predicted. Amazing. Chin couldn't help sighing. Even if it is the mutant of their spiritual power, it is impossible to predict the attack 100%. Lin reminded, keep watching, I believe Gwen can solve this incident on her own. Miss Gwen has 10 minutes. 10 minutes, what do you mean? Chin was a little puzzled. Because according to the current weather, it will rain in 10 minutes. If Peter Parker can't recover after 10 minutes, he can forcibly release the spores into the clouds. Gwen, come on. Chin was also nervously cheering for Gwen. Lin watched calmly. It's all little things. On the roof. Lizard Peter stared at Gwen with his glasses, thinking of the tube of blue potion just now. Then think of the tube of regenerative gene medicine that disappeared. I see, you took away a tube just to research the anti-gene drug. Bingo. If you guessed right, I will reward you with an injection. Gwen rushed up and got into a fight with the lizard Peter once. But this time, it was clear that Peter the lizard had a slight upper hand, although Gwen didn't suffer. But it was not as easy as last time. Spider-Man, you've become weaker. I've undergone a second molt, and now I'm very strong, you can't stop me. Lizard Peter's self-confidence began to swell. Spider-Man is no longer his opponent, who else can stop him now? But Gwen did not respond to these words of the lizard Peter. Instead, continue to attack. After beating the lizard Peter for a while, he retreated violently and began to untie the spore gardener behind him. Spider-Man, it seems that we can only deal with you first. Just let you be the last meal before global evolution. The greedy eyes of the lizard Peter's eyes may be the natural enemy instinct of the lizard gene against the spider gene. Or maybe it's just the bad taste of Peter the lizard. After placing the spore atomizer, the lizard Peter attacked Gwen with all his might. Without the burden behind him, his movements were obviously much faster, and he even enchanted his claws again. After fighting for a while, the lizard Peter spit out a mouthful of corrosive saliva. Gwen turned over dangerously and dodged out of the way. Hey, stop spitting, okay. Although there is no urban management here to control you, you must also have a sense of public morality. HMPH, sharp teeth and sharp mouth. Lizard Peter was going to continue the attack, but saw Gwen twist his neck. An action that seems to be warming up. A bad premonition arose in the Lizard Peter's heart. Spider-Man, what are you doing? Didn't you notice? I changed into new clothes. Lizard Peter was obviously taken aback, and didn't notice any difference in Gwen's clothes. Gwen complained in a timely manner, you must have never had a girlfriend, and girls don't even notice when they change clothes. HMPH. So what if you change your clothes? Today is your death day. The lizard Peter landed on all fours and rushed over like a catapult. Gwen easily escaped with a light leap. How is this going? Lizard Peter doesn't know. It was as if at that moment, Spider-Man changed. Gwen turned around and said with a smile, Actually, it wasn't you who became stronger just now, but I was adapting to this new suit. Now I'm serious, Peter. Since you have been obsessed with your obsession, then I will wake you up. What are you kidding? In Lizard Peter's view, he is better than Spider-Man now, so there is nothing to adapt to the clothes. I am the most fully evolved and most powerful human being in the world now. None of them. The Lizard Peter opened his blood basin and bit towards Gwen. If you are bitten by one bite, you will surely die. But Gwen just crouched, dodging Peter the Lizard while punching him hard in the jaw. Boom. The huge body was directly thrown into the air. Gwen definitely wouldn't let Peter the lizard go so easily, grab his leg and rip him off. Continue to output. Not far from the stairs. 
George was leading a group of people up, and when he was about to reach the stairs, he continued to remind, you guys go up first. Occupy the favorable terrain first and separate immediately, as long as I give the order. All the muskets fired at him. Everyone understands. The first few people went up, and when they just reached the stairs, they froze in place. George immediately became angry. I made it clear just now, and I won't leave now. What are you doing? George also stepped forward, and he was also stunned by what was happening on the rooftop. When interviewed later, one police officer put it this way, as soon as we went up, we saw Spider-Man interrupting Duckman. It's cruel. Yes, such a scene just happened in front of them. When facing George just now, Peter the Lizard, who is still invincible, is being beaten unilaterally by Gwen. There is no way to fight back. George, who has always disliked Spider-Man, couldn't help swallowing. Good guy. Spider-Man is a girl so violent. Still her own Gwen is gentle and lovely. After beating the lizard Peter severely, Gwen released a lot of her aggrievedness in the past two days. In the face of Peter being my good friend, I gave way again and again. Don't want to hurt him. I want to persuade him to come back. As a result, he was fine, because oil and salt did not enter. Who is not angry? Anyway, I have seen the resilience of the lizard Peter last time, so let's talk about it after a beating. And the lizard Peter, who was beaten violently, has begun to doubt life. After shedding her skin for the second time, her strength skyrocketed. When Mingming just went upstairs, he pressed down on Spider-Man and hit him. In just a split second, he was abused. Okay Peter, baby, ready for the injection. Although Gwen's tone was gentle, the lizard Peter still couldn't help but feel the fear. Gwen took out another tube of anti-gene reagent from the kit behind him and stabbed the lizard Peter's arm directly. Only then let Peter the lizard go. Finally solved. Just when Gwen breathed a sigh of relief, the lizard Peter's expression became ruthless, and the sharp claw of the other hand slashed at the arm that had been injected. Green's blood splattered. Everyone in George was stunned when they saw this scene. Cut off an arm. Gwen's face changed. Peter, what are you doing? Take it easy, Spider-Man. Click. At the end of the broken arm, a brand new arm suddenly grew out, exactly the same as the original one. Lizard Peter continued proudly, Look, I said so. I am the most perfect evolution, no harm will be done to me. If I were you, I wouldn't let go just now. These words made Gwen's face sink again. That's right, if I didn't let go just now, maybe everything will be resolved now. In the car. Seeing this scene, Chin also shook her head helplessly. Gwen was kinder still. In fact, in the final analysis, it was caused by lack of combat experience. Mr. Lin, why do I feel that you don't seem to be in a hurry at all? Jean looked at Lin curiously. Lin was sitting in the driver's seat with a normal face, as if it wasn't Gwen who was fighting. It's like watching a movie. Lin said with a smile, what am I worried about, with you, the X-Men? I believe that if Gwen has a problem, you will go up to help. Seeing Lin trusting herself so much, Chin also smiled happily. This feeling of being trusted is completely different from what I had in Xavier's school. Master, Miss Chin, 10 minutes are up. Lin looked out the window, and sure enough, a drop of rain began to fall, and soon more and more raindrops fell rapidly. Chin's expression also changed. He directly opened the car door and got off the car, looked at the World Trade Center not far away, and fixed his eyes on the roof of the building. I can do it. I want to protect Gwen. I can do mind manipulation like the professor. A burst of fiery red energy began to overflow from her. Is this the Phoenix Force? Lin was a little curious, but immediately denied her own thoughts. No, this is Chin's spiritual power. But, Lin could feel that Chin's mental power had become much stronger. It seems that the emotions should be vented, which in turn leads to the strengthening of spiritual power. Far away in X's principal's office, Professor X, who was processing the file, suddenly changed his face, but was replaced by a burst of surprise. Jin's spiritual power has become stronger, and has not been disturbed by Phoenix Force. Professor X became more and more curious about what kind of person Chin's friend was. Chin's power exploded at this level, yet it was not disturbed by Phoenix Force. This means that Phoenix Force will hardly affect Chin's mentality in the future. 
Professor X operated the wheelchair and came to the floor-to-ceiling windows, looking in the direction of Chin, where he could only see a towering building. It doesn't matter, I'll beat you up again. It's too late, Spider-Man. The lizard Peter smiled as if he had succeeded in a trick, and the sound of pattering rain began to sound on the roof. Miss Gwen, it's raining. If Peter Parker was planning a spore atomizer at this time. Hearing Hong Hu's reminder, Gwen's face also changed. It's all my fault, if I didn't soften my heart just now. Connors at the stairs also rushed out immediately. Stop Peter, or it will be too late. George also reacted immediately and rushed out. After the red, adjust the spider web output mode. Wrap the web. Gwen used both wrists together, and the spider webs shooting from the wrists combined to form a huge amount of web that Peter the lizard covered. At the same time, George also rushed forward, adjusting the musket in his hand to the maximum power, and the flames spewed out. Faced with these attacks, the lizard Peter did not hide without fear. On the contrary, there was an incomparable excitement on his face. Coming soon. Huge amounts of claws, at this moment also violently grabbed towards the sporizer. Just scratch that hatch open. Everything worked. Point zero. The distance was so close, almost instantly, Peter scratched through the hatch of the spore atomizer. An explosive shockwave. All of a sudden, the flying spider web was bounced away, and at the same time, George, who was the closest, was also bounced to the corner. The exploding shockwave also carried a burst of green smoke across the entire rooftop. Gwen sensed the danger immediately, and shot cobweb and jumped to the high platform. No, the scene in front of him is simply the end. The regeneration gene spores have dispersed. Before Gwen had time to blame herself, she saw that the green smoke that had been scattered in all directions began to shrink. As if being squeezed by a big hand, it shrinks back constantly. How is this going? Gwen, I have protected everyone. Hurry up and do it now. Green smoke receded, and Gwen saw the people inside, all of them were fine. Each of them has a red energy in them. Miss Gwen, the battlesuit isolation mode has already been activated, and the isolation time is valid for three minutes. Resolve the battle as soon as possible. Enough time. Thank you, Sister Chin. Gwen quickly found Peter the lizard, who was the closest to him from the explosion. So it was also blown to the corner of the rooftop. He had just recovered, and before he had time to be happy that his plan had succeeded, he kicked Gwen's flying kick hard on the head. The force was so heavy that there was a sound of cervical vertebra cracking directly. But even though he was hurt, the lizard Peter laughed maniacally, look, Spider-Man. The world is about to change completely. Look at them. The smile on the lizard Peter's face stopped in an instant, because he found his spore fume was searching. And those people were obviously infected, but nothing happened. No, how is it possible? How can it be? Gwen didn't bother to explain further. After controlling the lizard Peter, he took out another tube of anti-gene medicine and injected it directly into his heart. It's over, Peter. No, let me go, I don't want to change back to the old Peter, I don't want to. When the scream of the lizard Peter came, his body was shrinking rapidly. The anti-genetic agent worked. Gwen stood up without taking another look. Walk to the spore smoke that had shrunk into a ball. Queen Red, what should I do with these things? Inject all the remaining anti-gene reagents into it, and the lizard genes inside will be completely destroyed. Gwen did so, and soon the green ball turned into a blue ball. Okay. Boom. The blue ball popped like a bubble. Gwen came to George, and after checking, the Red Queen reminded that George was just unconscious. Gwen breathed a sigh of relief. After handing George over to the other officers, Gwen left the International Trade Center with a cobweb. Tonight, many people in New York City have no idea what a horrible night it has been. Beach House. Tony raised his glass, it's raining tonight, the atmosphere is better, isn't it? Definitely. Cheers. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.